And with that, I think all of the technical issues have been more or less ironed out. Welcome to another episode of Legend of the Drowned Isles. I'm your host and GM. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One of this homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign. Uh, the second campaign, technically, within the world of Omesha, a homebrew world which is constantly being revised and updated and added to. I have my players assembled with me for this uh, second campaign called The Great Confusion, which seems to be appropriate. Hopefully, uh, the technical issues won't follow us. Uh, players, please introduce yourself, starting on the left. Uh, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, Illusionist. My name's Marie. I'm playing Annie, who is a rogue. Hey, my name is Nax, and I'm playing uh, Medrek, half orc cleric. And we are. I almost forgot like, my other character's name there. <laughs> it's been a couple of weeks. Um, last week. I know. I'm still inclined to like sit over any time I start. <laughs> we will hopefully return back to those player, those characters. Um, in a later date, uh, they've been paused uh, a thousand years into the current game's future, or alternatively, this game takes place a thousand years before uh, that game. In the world of Omesha, a world of 55 islands surrounded mostly by water. Some of the islands are more or less uh, surrounded mostly by sand, but that's a whole other crazy world building problem I'll someday resolve. Um, last week. Last week, uh, of course, we took off. Uh, part of the reason we took off was last week was Gen Con. And I get to attend the virtual Gen Con, see all kinds of cool things there. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hopefully applying some of those things I've learned. Uh, one of those uh, is to start using World Anvil. Uh, it's a pretty cool product for managing your world building. Uh, and I'm going to be starting putting articles up on there. And I will post a link to the uh, Omisha world, if the, anybody would care to check it out, uh, have only unveiled this slightly as a demo to, uh, to Marie, uh, but I'll start to put up some more articles there, because uh, I had an article that I was, I've been meaning to kind of publish for a while, uh, and uh, hopefully that will help to illuminate the world, and I can remember it <laughs> with a tool at my fingertips, rather than me trying to, uh, you know, keep pages upon pages of notes in front of me. We'll see. Is that going to replace the wiki that we keep procrastinating on? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. It's it's more structured than a wiki. It's more controlled. And, uh, and it's yeah. It's meant for this. What's that? Okay. It's meant for this. It's it's totally meant for world building to support role playing games as well as writing. Uh, and uh, I needed to have some support structure. So I went ahead and bought a year's license just to give it a try. Uh, so, uh, hopefully, um, if you guys have things you want to contribute to that, what we'll do is I'll open up a uh, player section so you guys can um, write a few articles of your own. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you'll be able to use it as a resource as well to remember things between games, So, uh, which is also something I need to do. So, in all of the preparation that I did do, the one thing I forgot to do was actually write down the recap. So, I'm going to try to do this from memory. Dangerous all around to always do that, but I'm going to see if I can do that. In the previous couple of sessions, the group t sent a, d or took a delivery rather, to the uh, lighthouse on the southwestern shore of the uh, the Silver Moon Bay. The coal pack lighthouse uh, run by the Frey family. Uh, the delivery was actually for a new container for the very core of the lighthouse, a special rock that, as you learn from the stories that they were told by the Frey family, was actually uh, something that fell from the sky and was rediscovered. Uh, you got a chance to meet Angus, the cantankerous uh, patriarch of the family, uh, Harriet and Jonas, the I guess, current adult generation of that particular uh, family, as well as the two kids, Henry and Esther. After having a rather pleasant evening, uh, sitting and talking and enjoying their company, you traveled on home uh, that night to head back to Elfwater. But as you traveled along, you suddenly realized that the light from the lighthouse 
had gone out. Running back to investigate, you found the lighthouse crawling with sea devils. Uh, legends and, to some degree, real myths, if you will, uh, of uh, nasty creatures who live in the water and occasionally prey on boats and fishermen and come sometimes to raid on shore. In this case, they, uh, they had already made off with Harriet, carrying her into the depths. And also, as you were there, made off with the core of the light itself, injuring Jonas as he tried to defend himself, and uh, almost made off with Angus as well. The family is somewhat devastated. Jonas caught between two desires to go after and try to find and save his wife, but also knowing that the lighthouse must stay lit. He'd been working on a sort of backup system, if you will, using oil and the other things that are there, and proceeded to start to get that to work. Angus um, pled with you, essentially, to go find uh, his daughter, and gave you two items, essentially, that will help you along that way. One, a strange compass that is said to point in the direction of a star stone, uh, one of the ways they were found in the first place. And the other, a small box, about the size of a pill box, <coughs> containing three small, round, white, hard uh, orbs described as pearls of water breathing, which will help you in trying to track down the underwater location, likely, where they have been captured. With all of that, the fight having taken a lot out of you, and seeing no reason to rush off into the water at dark, you decided to take a rest. There are spare rooms now in this in this space, as well as a uh, uh, comforting, warm environment. You took that rest. In the morning, went off with one of the um, uh, rowboats that they keep at the lighthouse. You rowed out that morning into the fog, almost indistinguishable uh, surroundings, carefully making your way out through the dead man's fingers, the shoal that, that uh, surrounds the lighthouse, until finally the compass started to spin in all directions, indicating most likely that you were over the star stone. You're in the boat. The fog continues to be thick and chilly, the sun only a vague notion off towards the west. West? East? Where does the sun rise? I forget. <laughs> this is what kind of a day it's been. That way. <laughs> Uh, I, I think rises in the east. That's that's it still rises in the same direction here, even though there are two moons. Um, so, what do you do? How do you prepare yourself? It seems as though you're going to have to go into the water. Ugh, I hate this. Just the sea in general. I, I, I guess are we doing this? I think we have to. Silas, you're familiar with these pearls. Um, some of the other uh, people use them. They're moderately expensive. They're actually a natural phenomenon. You can actually find these pearls, although they're pretty rare. Um, what they do is you, you actually place them underneath your tongue, and they sort of clamp on. It's some sort of strange instinctual thing. It's, it's actually a creature, not a pearl. And when clamped on like that, it simply generates air. It's a little weird to breathe with something like this because you don't breathe by opening your mouth and sucking in air. You actually breathe by keeping your mouth shut and more or less swallowing the air which is generated in your mouth. These things will last for about an hour but they can be refreshed if you find another source of air. Well, it's time to put one of these on. I'll just copy whatever Silas is doing because I've never used these. <laughs> Yeah, I'll put one under my tongue. Yeah, you do take one point of piercing damage as it latches on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of painful. It's a little bit awkward. You find your tongue kind of settles down on it. You become natural, but for the first couple of seconds, it's like you have a cold tongue. Wah, 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 wah. Kind of. Uh, it's like eating a sharp potato chip when it stabs into your roof of your mouth. Medric? 
What yep. kind of armor are you wearing? Uh, splint mail. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, you, know that, the you know that it's quite heavy, and it's going yeah. to make it difficult to maneuver in the water. You've spent enough time on boats and know that um, one of the most dangerous things that can happen for soldiers on boat is for, is boats is for them to fall off. Uh, because if they're in their full armor, it can make it very difficult. But you can choose to wear it. It's just going to be more difficult to move in the water itself. Hmm. There is an anchor and the on board. Is probably, uh, the shell is probably also is not something I should bring with me. <laughs> that would also be very difficult to use underwater. Again, you can choose or to... Or did I uh, end up taking the um, hammer... That was made out of like coral last time. I uh, thought one of us took it. I believe you did, yes. Yeah. The strange hollow headed hammer. Mm-hmm. Any other preparations? Anything you're leaving on board the boat? There is a, an anchor on the boat. You're not sure how deep the water is here. This is actually further out usually than people would row, except if they're actually connecting to another boat. There's not a lot of oh, tide. Uh, we'd already chosen to leave uh, behind a bunch of the stuff that was uh, water sensitive. Mm-hmm. So, uh, well, can we tie the boat off to uh, one of the? Is there anything sticking out of the water near us? Not really. You've passed outside the dead man's fingers. The dead man's fingers yeah. are probably about another, I don't know, hundred feet away. So you probably could anchor the boat to that, but it would mean kind of having having to kind of backtrack a little bit. Yeah, it's only 100 feet, so. But if I leave this, well, uh, I don't want to lose it forever. <laughs> I will uh, lower the anchor down, though, to see if I can determine how deep it is here. Okay. I figure there's probably about uh, 100 feet of rope, and uh, at the, about the 90-foot mark, still not finding anything, uh, and lowering it down those few extra feet. It seems to catch, but not on something solid. There is a bit of a tug to it, though. Uh, also, Marie, you were muted if you were saying... I thought you were saying something earlier. Um, well, then I'll pull it back up and tell them that we're going down at least 100 feet. Make a or at uh, least strength feet. check for me, please. Me? Nope, Silas. Oh. Sorry, make a... Strength check. Okay. Uh, All I had said was I would have left my stuff with my stuff. Here we go. With Esther, basically. I am. I would have only brought what I was meant to bring with me. Okay. And the hammer, is that a Warhammer? It is a Warhammer, yes. Okay. It has a weird weight to it, but it is designed like a Warhammer. Okay. It feels lighter. The. uh, as I said, there is a bit of a, of a resistance on the rope as you pull the anchor back up. You give it a mighty tug, and it lets free. As you pull up on the anchor, uh, you discover what might have been the resistance. There seems to be some, some thick seaweed attached to the edge of the uh, anchor. It looks like it actually caught uh, a bit on the, the tip of the anchor. But moreover, a bone uh, comes up with the anchor. Um, it looks like a, actually it's a, technically a pair of bones, uh, about uh, a foot and a half long, one thinner, one thicker. Are they like an arm bone? Yeah, you compare it to your own arm, it looks about the same length, yes. Hmm. There's no hand, though. It does not appear to be. Okay, I'll drop him back in the water. Um, Make a constitution saving throw. Mm. Okay. Um, As you grab onto the bone and the seaweed to pull it off the hook and drop it back in, you feel a bit of a stinging sensation on the edges of your fingers and quickly uh, shove the remains back into the water as you look down on the edges of your fingers you quickly wipe them on the, on the on your pants uh, and there's a bit of a green streak uh, or on your 
robe? I forget what you wear. Uh, on your jacket. Uh, a bit of a green streak left behind. Uh, it, it appears as though these fronds are sort of poisonous. Not entirely unlike something like poison oak. Okay. I will mention that to the people. Oh, also, uh, I forgot to mention, but uh, I would be leaving uh, Gideon uh, back at the tower. Okay. Gideon, can, uh, Gideon and Henry are, are instant friends. And as you left, uh, Henry was kind of chasing Gideon around, and you're not really sure if Gideon was flying scared or flying to tease the boy. Yeah, I'd tell him not to chase him too much. He might bite. <laughs> that seems to spur Henry on even more. Bite me, bite me! <laughs> so in terms of what stuff I'm bringing, if everybody else is saying they left stuff back at the uh, lighthouse, mm -hmm. can we just assume that Medrek would be bringing the lighter Warhammer like that he stole from the uh, Sea Devil? Right leaving the sheet behind? Sure. And for armor, like with the armor only and no shield, how difficult would it be to maneuver underwater? I mean, the armor is heavy and awkward, so it will make it basically difficult terrain. And if you okay. have to do any sort of physical maneuvering, it would cause disadvantage. It's not okay, armor so designed I guess to sleep. It's he's not bringing the split mail. <laughs> okay. Is he still bringing the shield? Would well, that cause like difficult maneuvering too? Or? It's it's less so. Um, you can use the shield, you just can't wield it very effectively. Yeah, okay, I'll bring that instead. Okay. Uh, effectively, you'll have to use a bonus action to raise the shield if you're intending to be protected by it. So okay. It costs a little bit of extra energy. You also are quite surprised in kind of swinging this weapon. And I may as well tell you now, um, the way that it's designed with the sort of open structure that the head has uh, and the way that the uh, handle is actually quite thin but still rigid, uh, it is designed to be wielded in water. So you will not have disadvantage on swinging this weapon. Whereas if you used your normal weapons, you would understand trying to cut through the water would be very difficult. Yep. Just from a player standpoint, so I know, do rapiers get that disadvantage? Yes. Yes. Uh, rapiers have slashing or bludgeoning, right? Not bludgeoning. <laughs> well, they have one or no, the they're other. they're impaling right? weapons. I don't think they even have slashing, but I'm just checking to see what my AC is without the error. Because I think a rapier is a slashing weapon. Mm. Oh, it's piercing. Yeah, it's piercing. If it's piercing, then it won't have the disadvantage. Uh, because you can basically thrust it through the water straight. Um, That's what I thought. Also, the player app for d, &D Beyond doesn't let you click things to get more information. Ah. So, it's, it's I'm going to go back to the website. Still kind of beta. Oh, yeah. But yeah, rapier say, is piercing, specifically. Okay. I think I was thinking of a cutlass, which is why I was thinking slashing. Yeah. Yep, that one should be okay. Um, I want to make a joke about beta, because it's, it's not great, but it's beta than nothing. Uh, Fair enough. That wasn't yeah. worth it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so, have you guys prepared yourselves now to where you feel sufficient? Yep, I'm just trying to figure out what my, what my AC is. Uh, what's your dex modifier? Zero. Then it's zero. Well, ten, uh, 10 AC, 12 with the shield up. Wow, that's horrible. <laughs> yep. This is the danger of, of fighting underwater. Yeah. Um, you could, I mean, as I said, you can keep If only we had the bracers of defense. <laughs> yep. There are also spells. This is why a lot of the 
cleric spells or paladin spells yeah. have give you AC bonus of some kind. Cool. Yup. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Medric, I will give you a chance to choose your spells if you've not done so, because you would have had a chance that morning to choose your spells. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully you have, because that will take a little while. But. I'm sorry for leaving there a second. I can be kind of threw up and got throw up all over her face and. Ooh, cat accident. Not happy. Yo. So we were just getting ready to go down. Is that? That's I right. We didn't yep. progress any further because yep. I wanted to wait until you were here just to make sure. Oh, yeah. Medic is changing clothes, that's all. <laughs> She's yeah, I okay. Think, like, She's okay. Spells. I, I, chose, I chose my spells like last week. Or okay. the week before, I mean. Sounds good. Just wanted to make sure. Yep. All right. Are you getting into the water? Reluctantly. Mm. After my compatriots, yes. Yep. Now I'll dive in. Medic does not like the ocean. <laughs> For you, Silas. Even less so now that, now that there's like slimy gross seaweed that hurt <laughs> uh, yeah and we did tie up the boat at one of the fingers yep so you're about a hundred feet away from the from where the uh, the actual spot was um, the compass is watertight um, something that uh, Angus would have mentioned to you it was actually designed to be on a boat um, mm -hmm. and just it is a boat's compass it's a fairly large one it takes up like it's a it's a chunk uh, but it can be carried in a, on a chain, essentially, around your belt or around your waist. I am Flavor Flav. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that works. Around your neck. Uh, so if we tied the uh, boat around one of the fingers, can I grab, like, a pebble or some little stone off one of the fingers, if that's there? Uh, yeah, easy enough. Okay. So I'll carry that with me. Maybe to use as a light later. Okay. There are motorboats that are swimming nearby. No, sorry. <laughs> As you enter the water, it is cold. This is the nature of a large ocean water that it tends to be a lot colder than you might expect. For you, Silas, that's a very natural feeling. You grew up on the water, practically actually on the water. Uh, your mm -hmm. family's uh, fishing expeditions... Uh, taking you out, even at a young age, practically daily, until finally you were able to demonstrate that you had other interests uh, that uh, could both employ you and, and uh, keep the family uh, uh, in what it needed. Uh, but nonetheless, even you find it a little bit chilly. Um, for you, Annie, you haven't spent as much time in the open ocean, uh, and it comes as a bit of a shock to the system. Uh, it is... I'm, I'm not a swimmer. For, for me, when I enter the water, and as soon as the water goes above my heart, I feel that shift uh, in the buoyancy and how my body is moving and how everything doesn't feel quite as it really should be. And I, yeah. I kind of project that, that Annie would feel something similar to that. Um, I mean, she probably knows how to swim, but like it's more of a, if you need to. And, and more likely swimming in lakes or even like, swimming pools rather yeah. than the open ocean itself. Oh, yeah. Like, temperature controlled, probably. <laughs> and, it, and the chill, for one thing, is pretty rough, but also um, the strange sensation of the air being generated from within your mouth and taking a few minutes to kind of learn how to gasp properly because the only time you open your mouth is to breathe out now. Breathing in is mouth closed, cheeks are, are filled with air, and you kind of just let it flow down your, your throat. It takes a few minutes to kind of adjust to this, this weird sensation. This is weird. Um, you're also instantly soaked right to the bone. <clears throat> Yo. Um, probably, you know, wishing you had an actual suit designed for swimming, because your regular clothes are just going to be kind of clingy and, and awkward. Medric, there's a number of things that are going through your head right now, I suspect. Not least of which <laughs> not least of which is the fact that you don't have your armor. And for a soldier who's practically had to at times live in his armor, you feel a little bit vulnerable, a little bit uh, uh, lighter than you even feel normally. Uh, at the same time, you can feel the the the, the ease of movement, uh, not having the, the pauldrons on, not having um, the, 
the heavy breastplate, even if it's splint mail, not having all that stuff sort of weighting you down, uh, and you slip into the water. Does Medric know how to swim well? Yeah. Okay. Well, swim like to get by, like Annie said. Not a leisure activity, but something like if you fall in, you're not going to die type of thing. Fair enough. As you slip into the water, at first there is a chill that follows into it as it flows around your body and flows uh, up your neck. And you find yourself shivering for a second or two. And then warmth. Warmth begins from deep within you. Somewhere around the area of your stomach, maybe, or, or maybe your lungs themselves, starts to feel a bit hot, almost. And you feel the strength of Ignis rise within you. And you find yourself nice. no longer affected by the cold. Um, for the other two, if you look over and glance over in Medric's direction, you see that there's almost a little bit of a glow to his skin. It's not a, a large nimbus. It's not like it's a bright light. But there's just an, an edge of, of heat that seems to be uh, right below the surface of his skin. So while, Annie, you're finding the cold water quite chilling, and you're not sure what an hour like is going to be like in this, Medric, you're not suffering from the cold at all. And Silas, to you... This feels natural. This is horrible. I don't like it. Let's get this done. I agree with getting this done. One of the other strange things that happens is when you go to speak. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a bit warbled. And you find that more than 10 feet away, you have to shout to even be heard. Just the way that the way that you're breathing, the way that you're moving, the way the water itself is is uh, heavy and cold. It all seems to swallow sound aside from whoa, 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 from about 10 feet away. At five feet, you can easily understand each other. So you have the sense that if you're going to communicate in the water, it's going to have to be close. Do we need a light? <laughs> from where you are just in the surface water, you can barely see down in. Um, it is quite dim once you get below the surface. It would probably be useful. Right, so I'll cast a uh, light on that pebble that I w or small rock that I was holding that I picked up earlier. Okay, it um, it begins to glow brightly. It suffuses the water around it with light. Uh, it's very clearly visible and does give you uh, about half of its normal light distance. Remind me how how bright light is. How what's the normal radius? I think it might be 20. I forget. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's 20. Yeah, so basically it gives you 10 feet of bright light and then 10 feet of dim light in this case. Okay. Uh, so you still have decent yeah, vision. Radius. Yeah, Yeah. It's just that the water itself, uh, the environment is so, so thick and pretty murky. Um, just below the surface of the water, you can see that it's not clear pond water. We're talking about the normal murk of the sea, small uh, microscopic uh, algae and, and algae and, and uh, little, you know, brine shrimp, little things like that sort of flitting and moving all around. As you enter the water, you can actually feel occasionally these little 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 pinpricks or a little bit uh, of, of motion and realize there's a, you know, a small brine shrimp or, or some fish that's kind of probing to see what the strange thing is but moves away pretty quickly as you move through the water. You swim downward? Mm -hmm. Yep. Silas. Well, mostly just drop downward. Yeah. Um, it's a strange feeling, and you, you're semi-buoyant with the air that's being generated from within. Um, Silas, you're presumably leading because you have the compass there, although this close, you kind of get the feeling that it's having a hard time. It's almost overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the presence of the thing itself. Yeah, he'd probably not, uh, just... He might look at it occasionally, but yeah, we're on the spot. It's not going to give us much of a reading. Yeah. If you're leading, I'll pass you the light rock. Or do you want me to hold it? Um, 
might be better if you hold it. Then you can aim it at things that you want if you need to. Um, yeah, Silas would just continue on slowly. I mean, literally, he's just letting the weight of his clothes pull him down to the bottom, and then we can start walking. Okay. That works. Yep. Because you're uh, tied... Something that you guys would notice uh, is that Annie's hair is actually like a very clear blonde. Like, really not normal blonde that you'd see every day. Neat. Well, it's, 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 his hair probably looks black down here, but uh, <laughs> it is apparently slightly green normally. Um, one thing that you'd probably pick up on fairly quickly is that Silas seems to be able to see down here. Which is why he uh, didn't take the uh, stone. Um, I'd be sticking near the light. Yeah, you, you quickly realize that your visibility is going to be a real problem down here. As are landmarks. Um, Silas, you kind of take note dropping down where you tied the boat was near the fingers or near one of the fingers yeah. essentially so you'll kind of have that as a guide stone behind you and you start to descend into the water uh, lower and lower and in fact the finger widens out as you go deeper yeah uh, around the the edge of the finger about 50 feet down um, you see some some wood uh, looks like planks of some kind uh, and quickly realize that it's the remnants of a sailing boat that probably crashed up against the the fingers itself. Looks like it was a fairly large vessel, about 80 feet long, uh, just judging from the shape of the, the remaining hull. Uh, looks like it's been there for quite a while. You can see some, some moss and some coral built up around it. Fish swim in and out. Kind of Is there a name on there? prow or are we too far away um you'd have to yeah. investigate a little closer to see but uh it presumably has one hmm silas are, are you sure you don't want the light if you're leading i have it uh, now. I no that shit. should be fine i'll stick fairly close to you guys okay um yeah he'll look around for anything that uh, I suppose we'll have to walk for a ways first before we're even close to the spot. So yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, I think it's this way. Okay, you continue to drop down. Oh yeah, he keeps dropping down until he hits the bottom. Yeah, the ship itself is sort of propped up on the very uneven ground that's uh, below you. And you can see that while the fingers themselves are extensions uh, that reach up all the way to the surface, the all of the ground around here is littered with uh, sharp rocks and stone. Uh, very dark black stone, very sharp ridges. And you find that you probably can't actually sink all the way down to the bottom, or rather the bottom here essentially is these, these ridges. Uh, it looks as though that when the ship came in, and crashed and crushed down it's sort of judging from the angle almost looks as though it was dragged across these stones and with subsequent waves and subsequent water uh, rushes was sort of slowly ground down until now the the bottom part of the ship is completely gone um, you also um, in the, the light flash that happens whenever a, a fish turns its side and gets caught in the light, um, realize that the fish around you are kind of swimming in and out. It's, it's obviously very comfortable to them, but they're reacting to your movement until all of them suddenly twitch and are gone. Just sort of swimming out of the light very quickly away from you. You're probably around 90 feet down now, when you reach the top of these spires and looking down you can see that the spires themselves another 15 to 20 feet before you get the base of those and then you'd see dirt or sand 
Passing around the boat, you do notice a name on it called the Daylight Grace. It's not Ooh. a ship you're familiar with, but the name might mean something to someone. Uh, I lean in close and try to tell them, uh, keep an eye out. I don't know if we scared the fish off or if something else did. I'm hoping it's us. They must not be accustomed to seeing light down here. Hmm. I only heard stories of the creepy creatures that inhabit these areas. I'd like to not meet them. Yeah. Craptopuses are pretty awful. Craptopuses? Annie actually has very little knowledge of the sea, so, like, this is kind of freaking her out. Just a little bit. Mm. I'm not going to let them know whether craptopuses are real or not. <laughs> she completely believes you. Are you going to describe them? No, I'm just going to let the, uh, let the, uh, the names, uh, su make, uh, suggest, uh, something to them. Okay. Um, well... I guess this way. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm so wrong. <laughs> Medrick is like trying to imagine what a crabtopus would look like. Um, how big are those crabtopuses? Oh, about people sized. All right. Gotta watch out for the poison too. I kind of imagine uh, Medric kind of going, okay, is it like a crab on the top and an octopus in the bottom or like an octopus all yeah. over? <laughs> is it like an octopus with, with crab claws at the end of each of the tentacles? That would be terrifying. <laughs> that would be. Um, and yeah, he would have made sure to mention to watch out for the poisonous uh, uh, seaweed. Yeah. I think he told us that, that that back in the boat. Yeah. Yeah. And he would have noticed the quick reaction that Silas had when he tried to scrape and the hook. Ow! <laughs> um, so, yeah, just uh, head off in uh, what I believe to be the right direction. Okay. Hopefully, it is the right direction. Well, if we're going the wrong way, the compass will tell us. Uh, we're a little close for it to really do much, but. Uh, if we get too far away, it'll definitely tell us. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Make a survival roll, Silas, as you try to navigate underwater. Not a lot of landmarks here, although you kind of have one with the sunken boat now to at least see for a distance. Okay. Eleven. Kind of wander a bit away from the ship. Um, you're pretty sure you would have hit the location... You're a little bit off kilter uh, to find it. But when you start to veer in that direction, one of the things you do run into is what could be described as a field of um, seaweed, ribbons of seaweed which, which uh, float upward in the water and ripple every time the underwater currents shift here and there. There are also some bright coral at the base of a lot of these uh, and there seemed to be some obscurement um, in the uh, in the uh, fronds themselves it's a large field uh, when you kind of run into it you see it trailing off in directions beyond what you can see it's also quite thick and it does resemble the seaweed you'd seen before um, Make hmm. a perception check. Actually, all three of you can make perception checks. Silas is without disadvantage. The other two are with disadvantage. Unless you want to get really close. Wow. Hey, I got 20-20 perception. <laughs> <laughs> perception. Five. Okay. I need two screens. So I can see what I wrote. I need three screens to see everything. Um, uh, Annie, that 20 would have been nice. It would have been. Uh, it's always nice. Annie, you're kind of moving through the water. And every once in a while, 
it's probably just the little fish with the silver scales on the side that catch the light just the right way to make a little flash on the edge of your vision. But every time you look over, you don't see anything. Or or maybe there's a dark shape right there. Or maybe it's maybe it's just the way that the rocks go or the small, very minuscule amount of... Is that sunlight overhead or is that just another... And you're so distracted by all these little things uh, that you nearly uh, float right into the fronds themselves. Uh, kind of following along the other two and then just keep moving in that direction. Uh, and then, uh, Medrick, you kind of look over and <laughs> probably shout, although it comes out more uh, uh, bubble than that. Blah, 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 blah. And, but it's, and, it's an alarmed blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> as uh, Annie nearly kind of floats herself right into the fronds and you kind of uh, caution her from getting directly into it Silas you've kind of held and stopped for a moment and take a look at these fronds and the dark shapes that you're seeing within them um, they're distorted they're twisted they're separated but it strikes you just as the light turns the right way or the the fronds twist in the water. That's a body. And there's another one over there. Mm. And there's now that you've noticed one or two, you start to notice that there are perhaps dozens tied up and twisted up inside these fronds. Well, I will point them out and say I don't know if the plants are active and brought them in or the bodies just dropped on them but yes uh, these appear to be poisonous and probably lethal let's not go into them let's not um, go around them then. glance at Annie because she was going to go into them <laughs> can we go around them as far as you can see, they extend in both directions. You don't know how far they go after that. They are fairly tall as well, uh, extending from the base sand up at least 30, 40 feet in some places. We can swim oh. up. Um, yeah, I mean, if we can swim, I'm fair wearing a fair amount of heavy clothing, but um, well, can so we swim here? You can certainly try. Um, you're going to swim up up and over? Is that the idea? Yep. Any yeah. plan for that? Okay. Uh, let's make it a... Also, even, Sorry. even though Annie could, like, is faster than everybody else. She's, she does keep pace with everybody. It's really dark about 10 feet away from Medrick right now. Okay, you begin to swim upward. Uh, how close are you going to get? Are you going to stay far away or what? What's your plan? Pretty Skin far away because yeah. we don't know if they can like reach out towards people or stretch out towards people. <laughs> Might be stuff hiding in there. So, yeah, go up at least like 20, 30 feet above them. Okay. You swim upward, and as soon as you're above the level of these fronds, you start to notice the current a lot thicker, a lot stronger, almost as though this forest of, of kelp has essentially acted like a, a windbreak for the current underneath. Uh, it is difficult going. Now you spent about uh, about uh, 20 minutes of your time. Um, and you're starting to get used to the flow there uh, and kind of understanding it. As you swim upward, um, you do notice that, uh, and, and kind of close, if you're 20 feet above, you'll actually lose sight of the fronds themselves, except for Silas. Um, and you'd notice that it does extend out quite a large distance. It's like a very large patch. You've heard um, some descriptions of things like the Sargasso um, Seas, which are large beds of uh, kelp and other things. And in fact, if this 
was at low tide, they might just be right below the surface. Although you're far enough away from shore, it's hard to determine how deep low tide is in here. Um, so how much further do we think we have to travel before we uh, hit the spot we were over? Uh, probably need to go at least another 50 feet, roughly off in that direction, kind of deeper into where the, uh, the fronds were. Okay. We'll, uh, lead off in that direction. Yep. As you float... I over, follow closely. As you float over the fronds, um, Silas, I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Is it magic? Yes. Okay, that's a 13. You consider a magical effect. Okay. As you pass over these fronds and kind of looking down and, and gauging your distance, you notice the, the movement of the bodies following the, the underwater currents and, and flowing and, and uh, moving along the, the fronds themselves wrapped up in them. And as you pass over, you at first think it must be just a trick of the water, but then start to notice that the heads in various levels of decay and the ones that you see in various angles, some, some of them at very twisted angles, all turn and look up at you and are watching you as you move. You are currently frightened. Mm-hmm. Damn straight. The oh, no, that's you, not good. You two of you I see am, Silas kind of probably stiffen. I am not telling them, though. Uh, and uh, personality trait. I always put on an unflappable appearance no matter the situation. I pretend everything is normal. Okay, make a performance check. Or deception, actually, in this case. Yeah, I get an 8 performance. Almost a 25. Do we get an insight? Sure. Yeah, that's a 14. Both Annie and Medrick notice that Silas uh, is no longer looking down at the fronds as he had before, but instead seems to be pointedly staring ahead and upward, uh, visibly shaken, and if anything, rising a little bit slightly. Yeah, Silas. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Is everything okay? We're good. Everything's fine. Just keep going. He's absolutely lying. That. Okay, we're good. We're good. Everything keeps going. <laughs> that doesn't seem truthful. Whatever you do, don't go down. It's worse than expected. Is anything coming up? No. Okay, so we're good. Let's just keep going before anything does come up at us. Well, from what Annie and Medrick can see, you only see the very, very edge tips of these fronds. You're high enough that the, the light doesn't really carry all that much, but there's a little bit of, of reflection on, on the slimy edges of the upper parts of these fronds. And they're moving. Of course they're moving. But they're moving like seaweed moves normally. Now you're not quite I'm so not sure. Gonna... What? Now you're not quite so sure. They're probably moving that way. Well, I'm not going to go any closer to check it out. <laughs> okay. I'll follow Silas. At this point now, Silas, as you're traveling inward... You have a sinking feeling that wherever this star stone is, it's in there somehow. You do notice a couple mm. of large bubbles burst in front of you. You kind of have to dodge a little bit and, and swim a little awkwardly to move out of the way to not be caught in this large bubble of air that suddenly appears from within the fronds and then kind of floats upward towards you. Both of you notice Silas twitch a little bit uh, and the bubble pass on by. 
fairly large. It'd be about half the size of Silas. Where'd that come from? Below, I guess. I don't know if it's safe to breathe, but... Another one appears about 15 feet away. Again, very large. Floats up to the surface. Have we gotten close to the spot, or...? As far as you can tell, there's not a lot of uh, not a lot of uh, landmarks here. In all the directions you look, just about the only thing you see now is this seaweed or this uh, the fronds below you. So I don't. Uh, what do I see when I look down at the bubbles? Are they just coming up from between the fronds? Is something opening up? How close do you want to get? I'm staying up where we are. Okay. Make a perception check. Eight. As you kind of float there trying to orient yourself and the bubble comes comes up, you're trying to see around it and you end up getting the bubble kind of halfway across the face. Pull your face back, but other than a a strange fishy smell. The air doesn't seem to be bad in the bubble, but it's coming from somewhere below. You can't quite make it out in the dense forest beneath you. Um, uh, I tell them that the air bubbles seem safe. Uh, let me let me test one first. Uh, and I'll just basically try to swim into one the next time I see one come up. All right. Okay. Works for me for you to be the guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's intermittent. Where you are, there doesn't seem to be another bubble. You wait a minute and then see another bubble off in the distance about... Uh, 15 feet away and then that one is paused for a moment you do manage to catch uh, one of them and kind of purposely shove your head into the bubble uh, the bubble itself kind of collapses uh, a little bit and little smaller bubbles start floating off of it you take a deep breath when you stick your head in uh yeah it's air I think I'm having a package delivered. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, maybe I need to pause for a minute to go get that. Actually, just uh, continue. I'll just uh, okay. I'll go ask who it is. Sure. You see Silas vanish into the bubble and never return again. <laughs> uh, this is the danger of ordering packages that can now come on Sundays. I, I just got the notice about that this morning, and I was hoping it was going to be this afternoon. In the meantime, oh, in the meantime, interlude. <laughs> uh, let's see. But I can uh, go get that cold coffee. We we could actually take a pause here. I'll I'll switch the pause screen and we'll we'll do that. What we'll did you back. order? Uh, just clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I need a new shirt. Be back in a second. Okay, well, that was 
that was unexpected. <laughs> uh, the I only ordered things yesterday. I didn't expect them to come in today. It's just it's kind of weird. First world problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Doggone it for delivery being too fast. Oh, well, uh, we will wait a moment um, for uh, Marie to return as well. But, uh, you know, I, I kind of want to develop a set of 20 questions. You know, somebody hasn't at the table. Let's add, let's play 20 questions as an interim. Um, if, uh, I don't know, what, what would be, what would be uh, a feature about Medric which would be seen but we haven't had a chance to describe yet? Um, well, it's probably my fault for not, like, sending in the original questions that you posted on the uh, Facebook page. But it has to do with, like, what does your character fear? And, like, one of those things was, like, creepy crawlies that you can't see at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Medrick is not a fan of the ocean. <laughs> That's a, a, a problem when the world is just like five islands. Unlike, the, like, those, like, disgusting creatures, like, full of tentacles. <laughs> and partly, like, not knowing what's out there until it's, like, right on top of you. Yeah, and it's it's generally, you know, not the environment that you work in essentially, except for having to be on boats uh, to get from one. Place and the reason to for being on a boat is to not be down here. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> boats are not outside; they are inside. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Looks like we've all returned. You need to unmute yourself, uh, Silas. But as you manage to stuff your head into one of these bubbles, and you all see the bubble kind of roll up, you know, a little bit lazily. It's, you know, how bubbles move in water. They don't necessarily, uh, not really in a hurry, kind of flows up and kind of engulfs Silas for a second or two. And little bubbles uh, uh, burst and, and separate all around his body and kind of float upward in this cascade, this, this upward cascade of bubbles. And when you, you take a, a deep breath of the uh, of the bubble, it's breathable air. It does have a, a, a fishy or underwater taste to it. There's a very salty tang to the air. Um, but otherwise, it seems to be fine. Uh, and it may mean that there's pockets of air somewhere down below all of these frogs. Uh-oh. Turn to them and uh, uh, this seems breathable. I'll try to catch one too then. Okay. Yeah. Without going any lower. <laughs> um, let's make it a uh, a uh, a dex check just for both of us. <laughs> you can use acrobatics if you have it. Acrobatics or athletics. Which I one? will use athletics because I'm good at that. For for me as well. Or yep yep basically you're kind of trying to find. And catch one of these bubbles. I'm just picturing it like mini game, like as an aside during break. It's like catch bubbles. <laughs> kind of. That is a dirty twenty. Okay, all three of you find. Uh, I mean, you can keep track of your your characters. Don't necessarily realize, but one of the things that was described about the pearls is they can uh -huh. be refreshed in pockets of air, and in fact. Yep. You've only used about 20 minutes of the, the, well, 25, 26 minutes of the pearls at this point, but they will all be refreshed. So they have an, another hour worth. Well, it's air. Now, it stinks, but it's air. It looks like we've got to go down into the fronds. Uh, that's how we died. It's definitely dangerous down there, but... This is the spot that we were over. Uh, when I felt the connection, like back in the lighthouse to Ignis, when I looked into the, uh, how should I call it? The rock? The beam, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I feel that connection anywhere near here? Not really. You, you're, not, you're not serving the same purpose as the compass at this particular point. You do kind of feel out with your feelings, and you feel from within the warmth growing. Um, and maybe if you, I don't know, maybe it's something you can pursue. Maybe these are things that, other signs of Ignis that you can 
detect in the world. You've never really tried that before, except for yeah. the obvious ones like the flame burning in front of you or the sun. I'm just going to kind of like keep checking every now and then. So hopefully when we get closer, then I might feel some kind of connection. Okay. But for now, um, Silas, are you sure we have to go down there? Can't we just go around and then underneath whatever it is? I don't know. I mean, there might be an underneath. There might be a cave leading underneath, or there might be a cave in the middle of these that leads in. Um, I mean, I mean, it might be defenses around their main place. Yeah, that's what it, uh, that's what I was saying. I mean, the, the, it seems kind of purposeful. Yeah, this is a good defense for an, against anyone coming in. But how would the sea devils go down there without dying? A seaweed moat, if you will. Mm. They, might, they might be immune to the poison. Yeah. Oh no. I don't like this. But I will cast a spiritual weapon. Okay. Oh, well, wait a sec. Actually, not yet. Can I even... No, I won't cast spiritual weapon right yet. Just let me check one thing. Oh, no, They're it's all kind of okay. floating there. If I try to sacred flame into the fronds, what happens? I don't know. You could try it. Oh, you will have to get closer, though, because you can't really see them. Okay. But when Annie gets back, I'm going to try that. Okay. Annie's uh, currently staring off into the distance. Little AFK flag floating above her head. Annie is like swimming, then it's like lag. It's just going to just suddenly appear somewhere. She's swimming along, and then there's a, there's a bubble that happens in front of her, and then a few seconds later, boom, she appears, and the little... as the, uh, <laughs> the pearl refreshes. Silas, what is something mm -hmm. that people might have noticed looking at your character that we haven't really had a chance to describe, or something you'd like to emphasize? Hmm... I don't know. Uh, Which coat is he wearing? Or is he wearing his coat? He's wearing his adventuring coat. That's why it's so heavy. Uh, is that coat like completely waterproof by any chance? In a way, it would probably be uh, an oil, uh, uh, an oiled coat. Okay. Um, so it's water resistant, but the water's getting in around it anyways. Um, no, I'm wondering if it could have like late, later applications. Possibly. Um, yeah, I'm kind of wondering if you want to sew it into a small makeshift boat if you need to. <laughs> I was thinking like if we have to get out of here in a hurry, like we can I'll, like take Silas's coat. I'll go under it. I'll hold a portion of it and like just breathe to make air, and it'll like carry us to the top. <laughs> we'll get the bend, but whatever. That's a pretty yeah. cool <laughs> idea. I will admit. That's interesting. Um, so as people would notice that he tends to keep things fairly close to his chest in certain ways. He doesn't trust uh, people easily. Uh, hey, Annie's back. I can stop talking. Annie's lagging, but she's <laughs> like starting to move again. <laughs> All right. So, Medric, what are you going to try? I will cast a sacred flame into can I figure out like which area roughly the bubbles are flowing from? Roughly. You you can tell where they've popped up out of the uh fronds, certainly. So in that general area a sacred flame will come down. Okay. If it can happen underwater. <laughs> well, you can only see about twenty feet, so you're gonna have to be pretty close to the fronds in order to be able to cast that. And if you're only at twenty feet, you're only gonna be catching the very edges of the fronds. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, I will go slowly towards where I can see the fronds in that one area. Okay. And sacred flame. Poof. Bloop. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they make a reflex save. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just trying to think of how that applies. Um, okay. 
What does your sacred flame look like? How do how, what does a, a sacred flame of Ignis look like to you? Is it shaped? Is it just a, a streak of fire, even though it's only spiritual? Uh, well, the description it's this flame like radiance. So I'm assuming a beam of light, but with like a slight, like a slight fire on the edges. Okay. I kind of picture it as like a, a, a moat of like a miniature sun with little spires of light coming out, especially underwater and little flames flickering around the edges of it. Yeah. Underwater, like the flame would be le less pronounced, obviously. So it would be like well, more light down here, but it's, it's not actually fire. No, which is, it's, it's a spiritual emanation. Um, okay. but it kind of bursts in that area. The fronds kind of react by burning really at the edges. Uh, and in that burst of illumination, I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh oh. Where is it? Oh, I have to scroll up. Woo! There you go. Uh, in that burst of illumination, the the fronds themselves around the edges get a little crispy. Um, it, it seems to be muted somewhat uh, maybe because they're in their home environment maybe because you kind of see that there's a little bit of a, of a, of a slick on the edges of the fronds that burns off more than the fronds themselves but in that burst of illumination you see in a, in a radius again about 10 feet clearly around um, several of the dead bodies turn their heads up towards you and it's a little chilling for the moment, but that calm inner center, inner center of fire washes over you. And it's weird, but you do not find yourself frightened of it. Oh. Oh, uh, Silas, is that what you saw earlier? Yeah, they've been watching us. It's nothing. Move along. No biggie here. <laughs> <laughs> Medric pushes Silas to this closer. <laughs> uh, do, you, do you still want to go down there? <laughs> uh, have I gotten a chance at another save yet? <laughs> you haven't kept close to it, so effectively it's out of sight. But you know it's there. So you're you're not frightened directly of it unless you were just seeing it again. Yeah, but usually you get a save every so often. Or if it's out of sight, it just goes away. Which in this case, it has. Yeah. Well, I think we have to. Um, the in effect is still in effect, so he still would have to make the saves to be able to get closer. If he gets any closer, he'd be, a, yeah. But, he's, but far he... enough, he's far enough away that he's not seeing it directly. Actually, no, you do have better vision, alive? don't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't willingly go closer to it, knowingly go closer to it. Yeah. Oh, well, let's clear it up with a save just to just to be sure. Unfortunately, when Medric points it out, you've been studiously ignoring that and kind of I, I kind of assume looking upward, looking at the horizon, looking at anything at all. When he points it out, you look back down. Yeah, they're all still looking. They're all still watching. They're all still waiting. And I saw them, like, actually move their faces towards us, right? It does appear like they all turned their heads, yes. Not in Do a... I remember exactly where one of them was? Oh, yeah. There's one about five so feet down the that side. exact spot you on that have... exact body. <laughs> you will have to get a lot closer. Oh, how, about, how much closer? It's about five feet down inside the fronds. Oh, yeah, how about that? No, let's not do that. <laughs> Well, it means you'd have to get 15 feet away. Yeah, you'd have to be 15 feet away to see it. Okay, but I wouldn't be, like, inside the fronds, right? No. Nope, nope, you're still floating above. All right, let's do that. Okay. A little, a little burst, of, a little burst of, of light uh, appears uh, precisely where the, the, the skull that turned to you is. Uh, and uh, roll damage. Boom. That is a D8, I believe. Where is my sheet? I think it's D8 plus modifier. 
I looked this up like legit two minutes ago. <laughs> Memory, please. We'll get used to this as we get a chance to play more often. I believe it's a. a yeah, it's D8. D8. I just. It doesn't say whether I have my modifier or not, so I'm just going to assume no. Very few things really add modifiers to damage. Cantrips usually no. Yeah, because they, yeah. they scale, so they usually don't add that. Right. But that's a six damage. Okay. You uh, watch with some satisfaction as the skull bursts apart into small pieces. Didn't seem huh. to move, didn't seem to resist, didn't seem to do anything. I'll still swim back up towards my friends because of reasons. Okay. You kind of sweep your arms and, and note that having all that extra weight would have been kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially over like a field of murderous fronds. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, you kind of hover there. I'll tell my friends, uh, well, that one's gone. Did I see any other ones? Oh, yeah. In the little bright, bright illumination of that, you see a dozen more, at least. And it's, it appears like the these fronds have mm -hmm. collected bodies for who knows how long. From what you can see of the field, actually, you couldn't really see the edges of it from where you are right now, even, the, even that close, because you can't see very far. But you know you've been swimming for quite a while, and if all the fronds are this thickly uh, covered in bodies, that would be hundreds. Where I zapped the uh, fronds the first time, like not the body, but the fronds, how much damage did it, how much, how mangled do they look? Look singed around uh, the edges. It wouldn't be realistic, what? They're singed around the edges, and you notice a okay. little blackening where probably that substance that was on them, the same stuff that Silas wiped off his fingers, it, it kind of burned off a little bit. So it wouldn't be realistic to, like, burn the fronds all the way down to clear a path, in other words. It would take way too long. You don't know how deep it is. Um, it would take a lot of effort. So, you're all floating there, looking at each other, Silas pointedly not looking downward. Anybody have any ideas? Oh, Silas, I, I killed one of them. I, I don't know if it was undead, but it's no longer there. I mean, for me, I can't really do anything unless I'm, like, physically close to them, so I don't want to do that. Uh, Annie, make a... Hmm, I gotta check a character sheet here just to see what those are. Do, 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 do. I'm randomly picking a character sheet that happens to be yours, but I'm just looking at the skills. Someday, I'll remember to put the note in front of me, which has all the skills listed, which is what I meant to do. Uh, make a, let's call this an investigation roll. Investigation. Oh, it helps if I press the right button. <laughs> Nine. Nine? Okay. Yeah. Um, whatever this is, whatever causes these bubbles, You're not really sure. But the bubbles are coming from down below. And that seems to be the right direction. But this is a dangerous spot. With all these things around here. And you can't help but think that maybe there's another entrance? Or maybe this is a back door? Or maybe As there's a trick to this? someone who sneaks out of places, there's probably another entrance somewhere. We just have to find it. The only thing is you do worry that hope. any other entrance, if it's the main one or whatever, is going to be guarded. Yeah. So I, I'll express that. This seems to be the, uh, the way to sneak out. Hmm. Well, 
Silas is willing to do whatever you guys want to do, as long as it's not going down there. It would, I'll, I'll, with my knowledge of getting out of places that are well guarded, um, I will express that it's going to be really hard to go another way. This seems to be the way to sneak in and out compared to going full force from the front door. Did we notice that when we were on the seafloor, how how well attached these fronds were to the bottom? You never really took a close look at the fronds. Okay. So it's it's hard to say. Uh, do you have botany? <laughs> no. Make a survival nope. roll. Let's call it that. Survival, it a, I might have that. A disadvantage because you are not an underwater expert. By your own no. professed not wanting to be underwater. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You you really didn't notice. I mean, they're still holding up. They they hold up to the tide, so they're probably well attached. But you've also known that some trees can come right out of the ground, even though they have deep roots. So it's hard to say. Well, well, Silas agrees that. with Annie. Silas just can't get himself to move any further. All right, screw it. Spiritual weapon time. So it's going to appear like inside the fronts, and it's probably going to light things up inside the fronts too, because it's bright. Well, remember, you can only see about 20 feet. So you can only cast it up to 20 feet away. Even though it's got a larger range, yeah. you can't see to cast it anywhere else. So I'll go, I'll swim as close as I can to the fronts so I can see them. Okay. Cast a spiritual weapon in there. All right. And the idea is I want to basically just like gather as many fronds around the spiritual weapon as possible and like move it up again to pull the fronds out of the out of whatever they're attached to okay. or snap them in half do as much damage as possible <laughs> as you you kind of focus and summon the spiritual weapon this flaming hammer of ignis it appears deep within the fronds and starts to turn and twist and tangle as many of them as possible well here's the problem it has no physical form and you realize this as it starts to turn and twist and more or less move through them because it doesn't have physical form of its own. As it moves through them, though, it is doing some damage. Okay. okay. Right. So as the fronds get damaged, maybe we can follow along? Um, well... It's going to basically clear a path for us. You watch as the spiritual weapon twists and turns. The fronds themselves around are flowing away, kind of out of the range. The mm -hmm. spiritual weapon, if you're going to be moving it around quite a bit, can make a bit of a dent in there. Uh, you also hear the sort of clatter and crack, and from below you, Silas, carrying through the water, you can hear the cracking and clattering of bones, and maybe a slight moan as well, coming up not just from here, but from everywhere. Is it coming? Is that is that possible? Uh, as sure. The spiritual weapon. How long does it last? How many rounds? Uh, ten rounds. Ten rounds. Yeah. Man. Okay. And and describe. So we have me one what, minute. I'll get down there. Describe to me what it looks like. It's doing. What you're trying to do. Is it just it's spinning around as fast as possible? Okay. Like a, with a nice trail of fire. Like following it. Okay. For as much fire as we can have in underwater. And. Yeah, it's just cutting or tangling as many fronds as possible in that one area. And I'm trying to like make it go down Okay. to hopefully the seafloor right. where are we can follow without getting like down? destroyed. Yeah. What? Are you following it down? Because remember, it only yeah, goes about 20. Okay from you can't really see it beyond. Light. Well, actually, it gives off a little bit of light, so you can see it a little bit more distance. Yeah. Okay. So I'll follow right. you. I'll follow my drive. Yeah. All right. Uh, as you dive into the hole left behind by your spiritual weapon spinning madly uh, kind of burning and it's like and you put a hammer on a string and kind of yeah. it's, 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 it's sort of like thor's drill kind of going into the Fire blender into the uh, thing um as you start to follow behind it uh you notice that the water is thick and murky and every time it touches your skin it starts to burn 
please make a constitution saving throw. Uh -oh. Both of us? If you're both going down, yep. Uh, I'm following him, so. Constitution. Um. Okay. That is not a good roll. That is not a good roll. How do we do, Annie? 15. 15? Okay. Medric, you are poisoned. Annie, you are fortunately not poisoned, as it seems like the brunt of this was taken by Medric, but both of you take five points of poison damage. As you realize, unfortunately, by, by doing it this way, you, the fronds themselves have kind of turned into smaller bits and pieces, releasing their uh, toxic substance into the water directly where you're, you're swimming now. Uh, as well as little bits and pieces of bone, as well as the fronds themselves. And, Medric, you find uh, some of the fronds kind of stick onto the side of your face, a large piece of it. And then you kind of rip it off and you feel that tingle in your fingers. Uh, and then another one kind of gets into your eye and you're kind of blinking and trying to see. And your eye is starting to burn and swell a little bit. Uh, and then you can kind of feel the itching feeling as little tiny microscopic bits of frond float in and around your clothing and kind of make you start to itch and scratch badly. Uh, Annie, you kind of get a two-second warning that Medric is starting to freak out a little bit by trying to get up to these these uh, these itches and manage to kind of bl blow some of the water around you or push some of the water around you to try to create a little bit of space, but you still feel on the surface of your skin this tiny little amount of, of uh, burning poison. Do you continue downward? Might as well. We're already, like, how far down are we? Uh, well, this would be the first 10 feet. And how tall would, did we say we swam up? Uh, maybe 60. Okay. And that was to be... Yeah, the, the, the fronds are 40 feet. Yeah. Well, it's probably the only way we're getting in without getting tangled in them, so I could keep going. <laughs> yeah. And now that I know what to expect... Of the little bits and pieces flying up, our future save is going to be like. Unfortunately, the area easier. is still just plug full of the stuff because of the way it's being drilled out. Okay. Yeah. So um, you continue downward. Yep. How far? As far as until we can see the entrance. Okay, Silas, what are you doing in the meantime? You see that they've kind of vanished. Wishing that I could help them, but unfortunately, I can't. Okay, so you're staying just floating behind? I can't move. Okay, make another save, though. Nope. Unfortunately, now you can kind of see bits and pieces of the bones floating up out of the hole, and you kind of glance down, and you see that all the fronds around seem to be reacting. They don't seem to notice it because they're in the midst of this, but now you can see that there are bones shifting and moving in that direction. They're probably going to be surrounded soon. You move down another 10 feet. Uh, Medric, you're already poisoned, so you don't make the save. Uh, Annie, though, you have another chance to save. That's a natural 19. So Still managing 20. to kind of keep mm -hmm. that that uh, stuff from flowing in. You kind of close your nose so you're not breathing it in through your nose or not accidentally breathing it in. Uh, kind of probably huffing a little bit, pushing some air out of your lungs to kind of get that bubble in front of your face. You both still yep. take eight points of poison damage, however. Yeah, I'm not looking too good. Oh, shit. Uh, as you're, this is getting thicker and churned up. And Silas, you can kind of see that while they've carved a hole, the rest of the fronds are kind of moving in, almost as though they're sucked into the, the uh, vacuum that's being created. And while they aren't moving so much, it's just sort of leaning in a little bit, threatening to close them in. Yeah, I try to warn them, but I'm too far away. Okay. I just float there screaming. Do I hear him? Uh, there's vague, high-pitched warbles coming through, but that's about it from here. Do you continue downward? I'll look up, see where the high-pitched warble is coming from. Okay, as you look up, you notice that the fronds themselves are kind of doming over, over you as they're kind of leaning in. 
almost as though where the fronds were there before, even though they weren't all touching each other, they were sort of leaning and, and pressing on each other, and now they're kind of pressing towards to fill the gap. Should we go back up? I'll Maybe. Ask I don't think I can do this again, though, so it might be a good idea. All right, well, Annie gets a level two cure wounds. So you reach out oh. and grab Annie oh, by thanks. the shoulder? Yep. And I'll swim back up and try to pull her up with me. <laughs> You've seen Medric heal before. And like before, this. there's sort of a bright spot of light around his hand, and the warmth kind of seeps into your shoulder. But unlike usual, you see no uh, flame form over his hand, almost as though that itself is contained by the water. So Annie gets 13 HP back. Nice. Nice. That brings me back up to where I was. <laughs> and so you float back upward. Are you going to move the fronds of the way with the spiritual weapon? Yes. Um, actually, how much crap is in the water? Uh, a lot. We're talking murky water at this point. Will the spiritual weapon make more, or is it still just going to be there no matter what? Hard to say. You've seen what it's done so far. You, the way you've used the spiritual weapon, it's clearly just created more of the stuff in there. But you could use it differently, perhaps. I'll spin it around to like not attack the bronze, but to make a current to get the stuff out of the way. Okay. I'll say that that creates a bit of a vortex. There's still the top of the fronds to move through, and you can either knock them out of the way or just move through them. That's your choice. Are they all closed in, or can we sneak into the gap? That's you can them? try. Who's going well, first? With both of us swimming curiously upwards, then maybe we can make it. <laughs> okay, who's going first? Me. Okay, acrobatics or and athletics? I'm you with me. What? Acrobatics or athletics? Athletics. Okay. Kicking manly. Ha, go. <laughs> uh, as you kind of uh, focus a little bit of your attention on this spinning, uh, flaming uh, hammer that's, that's carving out a bit of a vortex around you and using it to kind of push aside the fronds that are overhead, you take that moment and swim forcefully up, up, upward. It's slow going, especially with Annie in tow. The two of you manage to to uh, emerge out of the top uh, without any Ooh. further uh, in, ingesting or, or, or influx of the poisonous weeds. Following well, close behind you broken. is one of the bubbles. Bloop, 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 bloop. And it blows up and bursts beside you. Well, actually, it doesn't quite burst beside you. It flows up beside you, nearly, narrowly missing you. Silas can try another save. Seeing your friends emerge from there and kind of uh, hearing a bit of the bubble, feeling it, you look over, taking a, a sort of internal deep breath. They were in danger. And you couldn't do anything about it because of those things. And you're going to find yourself getting more angry at them than you are, uh, uh, oh, actually, uh, than you are afraid. I will say that Medric, that was made with disadvantage because you are poisoned. Oh, shit. So I will say that you both do actually get nicked by the plants on the way out. I just realized that. Um, oof. And you take five points of poison damage as... Uh, you find that the fronds at the very top, you time it almost right, but end up having uh, swum, uh, swum, swam, swimmed, uh, <laughs> upward, uh, and one of the fronds just sort of gently brushes against your leg, and you can kind of feel the sting. Um, Annie, you're kind of flailing a little bit, and your hand catches one of them as well. <laughs> but you are free of that. Okay. And he has stepped out for the moment. But now you can presume you're within speaking distance of, of Silas again. Well, they're broken. 20 feet down. Um, 
cure woundsing on myself. Silas uh, actually swims uh, past Medric and Any uh, as fast as he can, uh, heading straight down uh, to where they were uh, homing in on the bottom. Okay. You see Silas swim right on by you and dive into where you were. Be back. Uh, the fronds at the top uh, brush against your, your coat, uh, and they're a little sticky, and you kind of find yourself resisting them uh, from holding you as much as anything else. Uh, but the, the poisonous water, uh, even though filled with all these little bits and pieces, doesn't seem to bother you all that much. You swim quickly down to about 20 feet, and you can see that they had been churning up the, the uh, fronds quite strongly. Uh, Annie and Medrick will quickly lose sight of Silas as he vanishes beneath this, this new formed canopy. Um, just question to the player. Did you say be back as in be right back? <laughs> That's uh, He says that as he passes you. Yeah. Okay, as in like don't follow. <laughs> Guess I'm probably not following. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, he's going all the way to the bottom. Okay. You pass into the thicker fronds below. He's just trying to keep an eye out for the for what he believes are undead. Okay. Um, you do see those those dead bodies, and many of them seem to be turning in your direction, but they don't seem to be moving all that much. It looks like they are very caught up in the fronds themselves um, with uh, what can be mistaken for grasping or turning or whatever motions. It doesn't appear that they are moving on their own. If anything, they are being moved by the, the water and maybe the fronds themselves somehow. Uh, a Evil trick, plants. A trick of the of the way that they've evolved, if that's a word in this universe, uh, to uh, to use what they've been given. But you push on through. When you get below the the section which has been uh, uh, chewed up, though, the fronds are very thick, and the sticky substance on the surface, while it doesn't bother your skin, uh, does slow you down considerably. You kind of have to fi find yourself kind of pushing through it. Uh, and noting that in pushing through it, you're getting coated with the stuff. Another bottle mm -hmm. forms in front of you, or rather you see it coming. And in that instant, um, you you see what looks like uh, a hole. Uh, it's about uh, probably three feet across. And it looks almost as though the the surface of the ground kind of domes and presses until finally it sort of lets loose. And you can see um, thin membranes kind of let loose as a, as a bubble of air comes up and then snap closed again, having released this air up and going on by you. Like a giant zit. I mean... I was having a good day. Technically... We were all having a good day. <laughs> technically, it's more like a sphincter, to be honest. Um, <laughs> it's some sort of strange plant growth, maybe? along the, the edge of a surface of hard rock. Uh, gray and white and silver rock. Like a dome. Can I open the door? Um, you get closer to the, the surface itself. It's a very thick mm -hmm. membrane. Uh, kind of like uh, it, it's, its texture is a little bit like a, a frond of a plant or, or a, a leaf of a plant. It's got that very fine micro texture of, of extraordinarily small little little hairs essentially all along it. Uh, it's very, very taut. Uh, make a strength check. Uh, nope, wrong thing. Athletics if you have it, actually. I do not. Unfortunately, it's solid um, and you try to tug on it. It's, it's almost as though it, it's got more than just its surface strength, but pressure. I pull out my knife. Okay. Can I cut it? You can certainly try. Uh, make an attack roll. At advantage. It's not moving. It's just tough. Uh, as you kind of uh, shove the knife uh, in towards it, it kind of glances off the surface. It's, it scrapes a little bit, but the, the thick, fibrous substance underneath resists any, any uh, severe tear. 
And in fact, as you scrape across it, you notice that the little uh, gash left behind by your knife uh, fills in with a sort of pus-like substance uh, that seems to solidify over the cut. Okay. Well, um, I will need someone stronger down here. I am going to try to cut away at the uh, the local vegetation a bit at the base. So hopefully I can push some of it free and make a little area wider. Okay. Start to chop away at the bottom. Um, Medric, Annie, Silas dove into the hole you just came chokingly out of and has not reappeared. What do you do? Did he just go down? Seems like it. How long has it been so far? I mean, time is hard to tell when there's nothing that changes. It's only been maybe a minute or two. Three days. Should we? Um. I don't want to, but we should probably go down with him. He might come back. Maybe he said he'd be back. I think, I think be back is what he meant. Or has the frog like reopened where the hole was made? No, in no. fact, it's more covered over, really, as the fronds themselves all lean in towards the hole. Yeah, it's probably going to be a good idea to go down with him. Let's see. Even and odd. Uh, whoops, I didn't roll that properly. Do, do, do. You seem to have a plan. Maybe we should wait a few more minutes. Medric, please make a dexterity saving throw. I knew that was coming. <laughs> okay. Silas, you've managed to cut through a few of the, sp the fronds, and there's enough water flowing, enough underwater current, that they kind of get lifted up and pulled up out of the space. Uh, and, uh, Medric, you see a couple of the fronds leap upward, essentially, heading in your direction, caught in the current, and you kind of move out of the way as they float on beyond. You can see they're kind of uh, uh, dropping bones as they travel. Uh, a femur, a couple of fingers. Hey, first of all, gross. And second, it's like, like the gears are turning and it's like, oh, he's actually cutting them out of the floor somehow. The first couple of ones you've done are very thin, Silas, more like uh, ferns. Yeah. But very quickly, you discover that they are basically wood, and trying to cut them with your dagger is not going anywhere. Mm. So a few small ones here and there, but the bigger ones are resisting you. Well, that's all I get. So uh, if it's not working, he'll head back up. So you turn to go back up, and you can hear kind of a little behind you. Look over to see that the sphincter is opening once again and, and a bubble is being let free. I'll take a peek in. Okay. Before it closes. You look in to see it looks like an open chamber. Uh, there's a small, slight greenish glow from within. Uh, and it appears to be uh, filling with water and pushing the air out. Little bubbles forming around. Looks like a, a, a plant in the corner, but then the sphincter closes. Okay. Uh, I'll swim back up to the surface. Or back up to the, sorry, where they are. Okay. As you uh, exit once more, uh, again, restricted somewhat when you pass through the canopy, and now practically dripping with the goo that was from those fronds, uh, you... Uh, Medric and Annie see Silas appear up above the, the fronds again. How does he look? He's flailing madly trying to get himself unstuck from the plants. Yeah. Other than that, he's covered in poison. There's streams of goo all over him, and you can see it kind of on his face and on his hands and on his coat. He's um, not going to fly up, or fly up, swim up next to them. He'll stay like, you know, as far away as he can be and them still see him. Okay. But I mean, like, aside from all the goo, like, he looks pretty healthy. I mean, he still needs to be, like, within, like, 
10 feet of us to for us to be able to understand him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, no, wait a, a minute. Make a survival roll, Silas. Sorry? Make a survival roll, Silas. Mm. It's a fairly easy one, but I forget what your survival is. Yeah. It's not good. You, you easily pick out uh, which direction the current is flowing, so you stand on that side or float on that side of them so that the current mm. is basically drawing the stuff away from you and away from them. Um, yeah. Well, uh, he actually does not get within 10 feet of them because that is dangerous. Uh, I step about 20 feet away, and they'll hear his voice in their heads. Uh, is it, I'm fine. Don't come near me. I'm covered in crap. There's a, Hmm. Are you okay? Can they respond to that message? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's kind of warb. It's kind of warbly echoed wait. because you'd hear. Uh, actually, let me double check that. Well, this, the voice, I'm assuming that Medric and Annie would still respond vocally because that's what they're yeah. used to. Uh, but at that distance, all you would hear are their voices, which is an, a weird pseudo echo that's a little bit slower than the than the mental uh, communication. Uh, Silas has um, never done this before either, which makes it a little bit weird, but it's one of the magic tricks that he probably knows. Magic people know tricks. At this point, I'm not surprised. <laughs> It says, uh, you can communicate telepathically with any creature you can see within 30 feet of you. Yeah, I'd say that, that allows response. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sorry, what did uh, Medrick ask? How are you fine? We almost died. Um, ancestral quirk? Uh, I'll, I'll explain later. Um, I found a, I found a possible opening down there that the air is coming out of. We might be able to get in that way. Uh, I tried cutting free some of the fronds, but, uh, unfortunately, uh, they're a little too much for my knife. Um, oh, shoot. Do you think we can go back down there without dying? There's a lot of poison in the water. Yes, I've noticed. Uh, do you have anything that protects against poison? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't touch you, if, if you could be wrapped up in something, Maybe I could pull you down. Um, the only other thing I can think of is I could try to use magic to freeze the roots and snap them off or something, but I'm not terribly strong, and that might take longer than is safe. Um, huh. From some distance away, you see another bubble break through the surface of the fronds, floating upward. Mm. I guess not. Well, Are you actually, different about that one? Silas uh, notices it because he can see that far, but actually, the rest of you just sort of hear this this bubble. Nothing seems to be terribly different about it, but. Well, now I kind of wish I'd brought the two-person tent with me. <laughs> <laughs> what are the things you forget to pack when you're underwater? Yeah, I uh, I don't have anything that I can do, really. Um, I mean, might as well just go down again. Um, if I'd... Yeah, if we try to go down as fast as possible, it would limit limit your exposure to it like at this point we've been up and down a little bit there's kind of a clearer path 
Yeah. Um, so I could get down there fairly quickly using my like bonus action and action to to dash. I'm just giving myself another cure. Wounds. That one actually rolled well. Nice. I'd say about a minute has passed and Medric, you're no longer poisoned. Okay. It's kind of worn off. You can feel you feel numbness where the stuff had hit you before. But yep. the pain and the distraction has finally worn off. Um if you can give me the stone, I can bring the stone down so that you guys know right where to swim for. Yeah. Okay. Um Uh, the um, so the entire time I've had my shield like strapped to my back to keep it out of the way. Um, so what I'll do if we're swimming down as quickly as possible, I'll like unstrap it and like point it towards me, so it's like a weight pulling me down faster. I mean, if it was a weight pulling you down faster, it would pull you down now because it's strapped to you. Now it'll be more like aerodynamic, aquadynamic, hydrodynamic. I don't know. <laughs> He's trying opposite. to make himself bigger. Yeah. Yeah, that would make make you float though. Make yeah, it actually slow you down more than than speed you up. Uh, Silas, yeah. you notice on the uh, on the far edge far. of your vision, um, something seems to be moving. It's uh, long and kind of bluish silver catch the uh, edge of a fin. It's about 15 feet long, swimming smoothly, pacing the back and forth. The fin is 15 feet, or the thing is 15 feet? The thing feet. itself is 15 feet. Okay. Uh, uh, I think it's probably a shark. Yeah. Uh, I, say, uh, I think I see a shark. We should get moving now, uh, and I'll start swimming straight down with the glowy rock. Okay. All right, I'll follow him with the shield I in front of me. I will to hopefully not, not. keep away any frowns. And I'll just do double movement. Won't have any actions. Okay. Same. Uh, it's, it's, as soon as he kind of pierces the top of the, the dome, the, the new uh, frowns that are moving in, uh, the light almost is invisible at this point, uh, blocked somewhat by that. It's not carrying light very far anyway. So both Medric and Annie quickly move to catch up. Uh, Medric, yep. you're using your shield as a sort of battering ram to keep the fronds yeah. from, from there? Uh, as much as possible. <laughs> it's mainly like panic mode because it's like, don't lose sight of the light. <laughs> okay. I would assume no. you kind of pierce him with the shield and open up the fronds, perhaps that Annie can get through without being caught up in them. Yeah. Uh, Annie, I'll have you make a, an athletics or acrobatics with advantage as you're trying to dive through these without getting stuck or, taught or caught. Oh, that's a natural 19, so 24. No problem. You do this this beautiful corkscrewing maneuver uh, and kind of dive in and acrobatically, three-dimensionally uh, twist and turn and kick and float. It's it's a miracle that it very few people of, witness. Slow motion. It kind of feels like dodging arrows. It, it kind of does. And thankfully, these things aren't diving at you. But nonetheless, yeah. you keep yourself from getting caught up in them. The water inside is pretty murky. Uh, still, uh, with that uh, that thick poison, uh, I will have you make a Constitution saving throw as you dive back into the poison. Um, Both of us. Uh, actually, Medric is back into the poison again. Yes, so both of you will be making that again. Twenty. Uh, okay. On Constitution. Okay. Wrong window. Okay. Wow, man. Unfortunately, uh, Medric, you, you, you kind of instinctually snort at the wrong moment, and a little bit goes right up a nostril, and it just serves to bug you. You are poisoned once more. Uh, yeah. Annie, you are not poisoned. However, both of you, even though you're moving quickly through it, still take two poison damage. Uh, a lot of it is cleared out by now, and the shield is helping considerably to block a lot of the, the stuff from getting at you, but it still permeates everything. But you all three make it down to the very... Uh, well, actually, I should say, Silas makes it down to the very bottom. There are still the lower fronds for the last uh, 20 feet or so that are still there, they're still thick. So Annie and Medric probably pause at that particular point. Seeing the light down below them, what do you do? Dive into that? 
I'll wait until in case Silas does something because he's for some reason like the fronts don't seem to be doing anything to him. So like I'm kind of hoping he, he can push one out of the way. Yeah, I can try to help them a little bit to make it easier for us. <laughs> I'll leave the rock at uh, beside the uh, the sphincter and uh, head back up to try to help some. Okay. Um, what I'll say is, Annie and Medrick, you can both make again acrobatics or athletics. This time with advantage, mm -hmm. as Silas is effectively kind of leaning on these things to uh, move them out of the way. It does mean that while you had some of the goo washed off of you when you were up there. It's now thoroughly again covering you, Silas. Mm -hmm. well, that is a dirty twenty. Is a thirteen good enough? Uh, a thirteen, unfortunately, is, it does mean you're going to brush up against some of the fronds. The dirty twenty, though, you kind of once again find that opening and step uh, weirdly, kind of step swim your way through. At one point, kind of stepping on Silas's chest, he's leaning up against these. These fronds kind of hold him back bodily, and you kind of let right. step off of his chest to move down and find yourself down to the bottom. It is crowded here, and you, there's not a lot of extra movement. He's only cleared a little space around the, the thing itself, but the, the hole is three feet wide, so um, with a little ridge on the outside. Uh, Medrick, as you're moving through, trying to follow Annie's movement, uh, you unfortunately uh, do... Uh, do not step on Silas this time, which probably would have been... You felt that was probably a bad move because Silas is not that big a guy, and he's kind of small. Yeah. She can manage that. But unfortunately, you step directly on one of the fronds. It gets caught on your foot, and as you kind of turn to pull your foot away, you're a little awkwardly uh, uh, swimming, and one brushes up against your cheek for another three points of poison damage. But I am small and graceful. I can do things. It's kind of the thing. Kind of the thing for a sneak thief. Uh, however, all three of you now are now around this uh, the sphincter opening, the little uh, uh, pebble of light sitting right beside it. What is that? And you can see that's the, the thing the air bubbles came from. Indeed, and you can see a is scratch it across. Base, or is it some plant creature that's going to eat us when we crawl into it? It looks like a butthole. <laughs> well, I will. Uh... I'm still stay, standing back from them. Uh, say, if you can pull that open, we can get inside. I saw a plant growing inside that I think makes the air, maybe. Uh, and it looks like there's some sort of chamber. But I wasn't strong enough to open it myself. And again, this is all through uh, head sounds. I'll attempt to open it. I... Take out the crowbar. <laughs> we can both attempt to open it. It's proved to be mm -hmm. the most valuable piece of equipment in this entire campaign so far. <laughs> crowbar. Crowbars are useful. They are. <laughs> I don't okay. know why more rogues don't use them. It, that's, that's fair. That's fair. So, uh, it's a little difficult to, to wedge the crowbar as this thing... Imagine it like... I mean, kind of... The, the analogy is pretty apt, but uh, it is... Uh, overlapping uh, uh, plant substance, almost like thick muscles, which are overlapping and in, 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 uh, forming a kind of uh, almost star shape in the middle. And you take the crowbar and kind of find a way to wedge it in. Uh, Medrick, how are you contributing to this? What's your, what's your activity? Like after Annie makes like a dent with the crowbar, like I'll grab around that and try to pull apart while Annie pulls the other way. Okay. We're going to treat this essentially like a skill challenge. Uh, you need uh, three successes before three failures. Shouldn't be too hard in this case. Uh, Annie, uh, or whoever wants to go first, can go first. Sounds like Annie's up first. Yeah. Um, I believe crowbars give advantage. They do in this particular case, yes. Because this is what they're meant to do, is pry things yeah. open. Not necessarily, you know, bubble sphincters in the middle of the sea, but, you know. <laughs> it opens. It's an open-ended uh, concept. Well, that's an <laughs> What was that? That is a nat 20 for 21. Nat 20. As you kind of jam this in, and it feels really weird. It's kind of got this sort of semi-rigid, semi-rubbery texture uh, to it. The way, and, But you kind of wedge and twist and turn and take this metal and lean on it, which is only partially effective because you're partially floating. So you kind of push into it, and suddenly boom, it seems like it pushes through just a little bit. And you 
all on this thing, uh, putting your feet probably because it's three feet long, uh, three feet wide, putting your feet right on the on the edge ridge of it and kind of leaning in to open it up. Uh, a couple of uh, air bubbles start to flow up around you, uh, being released from this. Uh, Medric, there seems to be an opening. There's a li you can even see it. There's a little bit of a greenish glow, which is right around the edge she's created. Go ahead and give it a pull. I'm going to pull and... And a nat 20 does count for two successes. Okay, cool. Because um, I'm still at the at disadvantage, because if Annie's helping, is it like a straight roll? No, she's had her own roll. Okay. Um, and you are still at disadvantage because you're still poisoned. Uh, the, 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 this time it's your nose. Every time you're trying to do anything, you, just, you want to scratch at your nose, and you get that feeling like, if I could only just shove a knife in my nose, I can get rid of this stupid feeling. <laughs> no, I can't do that. i got to focus. i got to try this. Yeah. And you so it's a, is it like in. a straight-up strength roll? Uh, it would be athletics if you have it. Oh, yeah. As you're going to jam your fingers into the hole that she's created. And yank. You've got your fingers in there. It's really, really tight, but it's not <laughs> budging. And your fingers kind of feel a little stuck, as you can feel the little cilia, the little tiny hairs around the edge of it, kind of dig into your fingers a little bit. It's not painful, but it also feels a little bit like, I don't know if I can get my fingers out of here, but I can try. I gotta scratch my nose, I need to. Yeah, just to that point too, he's like, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> And you kind of bubbles blow out of your out of your nose uh, as you uh, try to uh, to breathe out of that. Uh, bubbles are also flowing up out of the hole, though. Uh, Silas, are you going to be able to contribute to this, or do you want to keep them? Uh, let them. I get nothing I can do. Okay. Provide words of encouragement. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend to be a bard. Make a poem about this. <laughs> uh, Annie, you're making some headway. But you can't yeah. really leverage this much more. Is there something else you can try? Um, you can feel. I will system. try. Um, I I will try to like. I'm I'm holding the crowbar. I'm going to try to help Medric by pushing back with my foot on the other side. Okay. Uh, that aid action will give Medric uh, advantage, which cancels out your disadvantage now. Mm -hmm. So you can try it again. Ah, I keep opening the wrong window. All right. Snort out grossness, bubbles, and go. Really? Ooh. Well, you don't have to take the disadvantage roll, so the natural one is not the result, which is good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but as you try to maneuver and, and push, you find yourself having to put your fingers right about where Annie's feet are, ah. and you kind of find your, your fingers squished in between her feet and the edge of this. Um, you also can kind of feel it pushing back. It feels as though it's on the cusp here of closing again. Can't we just break it? That's up to you. What would you like to do? Uh, Silas, once um, again, you have an opportunity, but if you feel they've got this... Uh, there's no like way I can contribute to it without risking poisoning them. Okay. Yep. You can make a nature check if you have nature. Nope. <laughs> huh, I think it's natural, he says, pondering to himself. Uh, Annie, that didn't I... seem to help Medric all that much. He seems to have taken yeah. it the wrong way. Um, Do you have nature? I don't. Okay. 99% sure. <laughs> it's not a yeah, natural no. girl. Okay. Nope. Um, what can I do? Um, at this point, the crowbar is wedged in uh, at least a couple of inches into the, the uh, structure. You notice that the, 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 the substance itself is probably at least an inch thick. It's pretty tough. And it's yeah. definitely organic of some kind. It's definitely grown. It's not, me not metal. It's not wood. Um, is there right now the, the crowbar is holding what's going on 
-hmm. So there's really, and I'm holding onto the crowbar so it doesn't fall back. So there's really, I can only really continue to use my feet to try to help them. Okay. Um, Medric, you will have, again, advantage, but which cancels out your disadvantage. However, the difficulty will go up because nothing's really changed. Um, it still gives you, you know, a regular straight roll, just the difficulty a little higher. Okay. Wait, could I possibly use acrobatics to try to wedge it open more, like shimmy things? Or maybe use thieves tools? Uh, if you have a thought about how the thieves tools can help, I'd love to hear it. I mean, a crowbar is part of my thieves <laughs> tools kit. <laughs> you're kind of already using that, though. And, and oh, you're not yeah. using it in the thieves tool way. You're using it as a, as a, as a crowbar. It's not subtle. Which yeah. in general the thieves' tools are um, meant to be subtle. Um, but yeah, is there a way that I can try to like jimmy it more directionally than forcefully? Okay. Treat um, treat this like a big lock, basically, sure, is where I'm sure. at. You know what? I will allow you to make a thieves' tools roll, and and try to treat it like a lock. I I love that idea. It's weird in this Chinese context, lock. but. Uh, you're opening someone's butt lock. <laughs> uh, that is a plus seven, so that is a 17. 17. 10 plus seven is 17, yeah. All right, so you're maintaining the, the uh, pressure on this on this crowbar and then kind of like, what if I just jimmy it this way? This thing does open, you've been told, so it kind of is meant to move in the right direction. And Medric, meanwhile, you're kind of balancing one foot, kind of half crushing Medric's fingers as he's got them gripped in there, trying to pull. And as you angle it just the right way, you fine. feel like, oh, did that's it. It's like a lock. You just have to hit the right trigger and throosh, the thing opens wide, releasing a huge gout of air that flows up to the two of you. Now, dexterity saving throws. Silas, you're a little bit further away, so you don't really have to worry about it too much. But Annie and Medric, you're right in the path of this. Why did the dice hate me so much today? I don't know. I think Brody got all of the uh, the dice bot luck yesterday. He rolled, I think it was five nat twenties against us. You've luckily, some, it was, you've had some luckily dirty it was nat twenty, life. dirty twenties, and a nat twenty, so it's not all gone. So, what was your roll? Mine was either a five or an eight. Well, you're not a disadvantage for this. Okay. Um, but Annie, what did you roll? Uh, it was an eleven on the dice, so sixteen. Okay. The uh, sudden rush of air pushes you both upward towards Silas. Silas, you can attempt to catch them, or you can let them go, but the opening is open at the moment. I'm not touching them. Uh. I am going to try to go down and hold it open. Okay. I'm going to jam myself in there. Let's make that an acrobatics roll because you're going to have to get around Annie and Medric. Okay. Uh, let's do even odd. It's uh, even. Medric. Uh, well, as you're kind of flailing to uh, to regain your balance, but this is pushing you upward, you see Silas diving on, on by you. And there's that moment where, hey, I think he's going to, is that his hand? Why is that coming at my forehead? And he slaps his hand uh, on you to use you as, as uh, leverage. He takes six points of poison damage what? from the sticky residue Silas? on Silas's hand. But Silas, you do manage to, to float downward and kind of dive into the hole. You can already see it starting to shiver closed. How are you positioning yourself? I'm just going to stick myself right in the middle of it. Okay. I'm going to try and like have my hands outside to push it open, but I'm not terribly strong. So. Okay. Uh, let's call that a uh, athletics check. Sure. Actually, let's make it a strength saving throw. Those are kind of fun when they're used. Same thing either way. Okay. It's all plus zeros. 13? All right. 
you have managed to wedge yourself in the hole, kind of sideways, kind of half cramped, one foot against the far edge, your shoulder. You were meant to use your hands to hold it up, but they quickly, uh, it quickly pushed your hands away and kind of landed on your shoulder, slowly crushing you. Uh, and you will take uh, uh, some uh, bludgeoning damage, four bludgeoning damage, as this thing is slowly crushing you, but you have managed to hold it open. Air is starting to rush out by you, but very quickly uh, diminishes. The other two of you see Silas has wedged himself in the hole. There's enough room to get by him. All right, let's do that and try to keep the hole open at the same time. Yeah, I will. Uh, I I have a lot of speed, so I will like dash. Okay. Um, fish fish like you dive towards the hole and kind of wriggle your way, uh, zipping on by Silas easily enough. Medric. You uh, swim down and start to take up some of the sides of the hole, uh, but make a strength saving throw, essentially, as you're trying to grip onto the other side of the hole. Really? Yeah. You, maybe it's because your forehead's still burning, your nose is still burning, but uh, you're having a hard time holding onto it. It's giving way, but both of you can slip inside if you would like. Yes. <laughs> Silas? Uh, after he does, yeah. Or once he's at least partway through, yeah, I'll just pop out. Okay. Uh, both of you kind of float into the room and so soundlessly, but with a considerable amount of force, the uh, opening closes behind you at the very top. You find yourself in a room... Well, why don't we actually show you what the room looks like. Let's see if this actually works out properly find yourself in a room uh, if I can bring that up oh, once again I've got the wrong uh, wrong icon for Medric I will fix that uh, eventually if I remember what I'm doing here it's a small ob uh, odd shaped room that is made out of solid stone around you it looks as almost as though the stone itself has been uh, carved more than it has been, uh, uh, more than a natural hollow. The floor is covered in small uh, mushrooms and in small uh, uh, ferns and different things, and you can see already they are starting to bubble up around the surface. Uh, around the room in two different directions, you can see what looks like uh, doors, but made out of, it looks like, uh, uh, wood but not in the shape of doors uh, wood that's been kind of pressed in on the surface of the space one on the top and one on the bottom uh, let's see if i can get uh medric on here properly also silas would be uh i would have moved away from them just to make sure medric's gone lag Nope, just getting the right uh, the right metric on, <laughs> on the sheet there. All right. And why it doesn't default to everything I wanted to, I don't know. Did you change the default icon in the character sheet? Yep. Then I don't know. I had copy pasted the old uh, one onto this this one, which is why it didn't come up immediately. Um, but I. Don't know why the nameplate and all that stuff doesn't st show by default. There it is now. Uh, and you'll want to reset your hit points. I can do that. Uh, yeah. Or is that where he's at? <laughs> oh, actually, maybe that is where you're at. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, I, I think we're at uh, 14, I think. Okay. There we go. <coughs> and is that right for Annie? Are you, are you able to access your character sheet? Annie, Me? Uh, you're muted. Oh. I forgot to unmute. Uh, anytime I move tokens, my computer freezes. I can change stuff on my token. Okay. I can't move things or uh, use the roller. If if you need to move, uh, or if I need to move your your uh, your character, uh, just I, tell I me. I can still ping. Okay, that's fine. Uh, otherwise, if you need to do it more precisely, just indicate north to yeah. east to that sort of direction, and I'll figure it out. Yeah. Alrighty. Um, as the, the uh, sphincter above is already closed, you can see that there are already forming around it 
uh, a collection of bubbles of air. In fact, you see the, the bubbles forming around these ferns and then kind of floating upward or sliding up the top of the room uh, towards the, the hole. Um, it's been indicated here by this, um, by that central pillar essentially is where this is. Um, and slowly you can actually notice that the air bubble is forming larger. Uh, it'll only take a minute or two at this rate to fill the half the room, probably. Whoa. What do you do? Uh, Look around. And does this feel pretty safe? I'm probably going to sit down for a while if, we, if everybody's okay with sitting down for a while. <laughs> um, I don't feel comfortable staying down here more than we need to. Do we hear anything coming from any particular locations? You make a perception check. All right. Silas is attempting to clean off as much of the poison goop as he can on the walls around him. Okay, it smears yeah, on Silas, the walls pretty readily. Does... Hmm? Sorry, what were you saying? Silas, why does your touch feel like the uh, like the seaweed? It's because I was covered with the seaweed. Okay. Silas will sh I will. Uh, put his hand up in front of the light so you can see the green goop all over well, it. I was just about to say, the light is on the outside. Because nobody can oh, yeah, it. to grab it. Yeah. Well, no, we'll without, just without cast thinking, light on another pebble in here. <laughs> without thinking, Silas would dry it anyways. So how does that not hurt you? Hmm. Silas looks really reticent to speak. It's... It's just something I can do. Is there anything else you can do that we should be aware of? In your heads, he says, I can talk in your minds. Yes, I'm already aware of that. Um, I don't think there's anything else here that would matter. Okay, but um, just, you know, for future reference, if you can go into a place that won't hurt you, but will hurt us. Just try not to let us go first. You kind of went without asking, but also I... It felt like the place was full of undead. I don't That's think it is part. anymore. But I'm sorry. Uh, just, can I feel the presence of Ignis or the stone anywhere around here? I'm assuming we're a little bit closer now to it than we were before. You take a moment and kind of focus inwardly, focusing on the warmth that's coming within you and trying to match it with any sense outside of yourself. Still nothing. Even okay. when you were in the proximity of the stone before, you didn't feel anything directly from it, only from the beam that was emitted by it. Okay. And that means that any some covering blocks the effect from reaching you, at least as it sits right now. However, you kind of take in the surroundings a little bit, uh, letting your eyes adjust a bit to the light. Do you cast light again? Yeah. Okay. Like, I'll just grab another stone and okay. cast light. Use it as a flashlight, basically. And you kind of walk around. You inspect these, these, uh, the walls and the, and the, the, uh, the two uh, passageways which lead out of here. The one to your, uh, the, the sort of south, I don't know what you're seeing, if you're seeing the actual uh, mm -hmm. appropriate lighting this time. Uh, but uh, no, we can see the whole thing. Okay, well, they did change dynamic lighting again on me, so I haven't updated this map since last time we uh, created it. Uh, but you do see uh, the 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 wooden slats, and um, taking a closer look at them, it's it's weird because they're oiled, uh, almost like a tar on them. And as you're kind of uh, tapping or feeling on them, you can feel that that thick, heavy. Uh, tar that is put into um, the boards on the side of a ship. The hull is, is oiled in a way to let water hold back or, or, or keep it from sinking. And you, you realize quickly that both of the entrances here, the, the, they're actually made out of old hulls or out of the wood of old hulls. And you kind of knock on the one that's uh, uh, nearby and it has a very heavy sound as if it's blocked on the other side. Put your ear up to it, 
and you can hear a little bit of gurgling of of uh, of of water. Um, go to the other one and do the same. Uh, again, noting that this is definitely uh, wood uh, from a ship. You can actually see the carpenter's fix at one point, where he's wedged in wood and sealed it around a, a hole that was there, uh, which is very effective at holding uh, water back. Um, and you kind of knock on that one, and it has a hollow sound on the other side. As you're looking at these two, the they aren't just walls. They very clearly do move. You can actually see that the stone around them has been carved in such a way that they could slide out of the way. If you can find the right handle, there's nothing on them that seems like a handle. Uh, actually, sorry, there is something that looks like a handle. At the very bottom, you find a, a kind of a, uh, a metal hook. It would be the the kind of hook you would use on board a ship for moving uh, uh, coils of rope or for uh, hooking on to, to wood or barrels. Uh, it's sort of a, a, a handle with a, a curved hook on the end, but it's been embedded in the bottom of those those walls. Well, these look like doors. One sounds like it has nothing, and the other one sounds like it has water behind it. The ceiling is about eight feet tall. It's kind of semi-domed as if they didn't, you know, worry about making square corners. At this point, you all can notice that about a foot from the, the top, the air is already gathered to open up that space. Well? I think we should get out of here before that thing opens. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, let's see if... Uh... I mean, maybe, uh, maybe Medrick could pull on the hook, see if the door opens. Yeah, I'm, I'll try that. I'm so, a little worried about touching anything that you guys might have to touch afterwards. Yeah. I thought you wiped out all the goo. Well, I wiped a bunch of it off, but I'm going to have to take a bath to get rid of it. There's something so ironic about get... someone who's surrounded by water having to take a bath, but that the point is... is <laughs> Is it's a sh it's a shared bath at the moment, which is a problem. Uh, which of these are you going to try, the one that North. had the heavy sound or the one that had the hollow sound? Do they both have a hook? They both have the same sort of hook at the bottom. They're different hooks. They they aren't the exact same piece, but they look to be the same function. Medrick? I'd say hollow. Unless Silas wants to take a bath. In which I'm case, it's hollow. I mean, this stuff will eventually wear off the more water I go through. So. Yeah. Okay. Uh, give me a uh, strength check, please. Athletics. Am I still poisoned, by the way? Or is that worn off? Uh, it's still, you're still poisoned because I just. Uh, actually, wait. No, that's worn off by now. That one. I, I can offer the crowbar as well. It seems going... like more of a strength situation. Are you going to try to use the crowbar underneath it or give it to him to try to use? I, I'm, I'm going to give it to him if he wants to use it. The, the crowbar won't help in trying to lift the hook, but it could be jammed under the door instead of the hook. Well, let's try the hook and then we'll try the crowbar. Yeah, I'll try the hook right now. Okay. Oh, if only. Uh, I know, right? You, you, you pull at it, and it seems but... extremely heavy. Um, because the and you kind of are 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 moving around in the water, and it feels almost as though it's pressed in, and held closed. No, is that meant to be a strength save or a strength or a athletics? Oh, it's supposed to be acrobat or athletics. So yeah, oh, okay. uh, we rolled out as a yeah. proper be like slightly higher hopefully Athletics. Ha! nope Fucking, oh my god <laughs> so it only had one point it could go lower and oh, okay uh yeah unfortunately uh i'm you gonna feel... complain on facebook about roll 20 later <laughs> you you feel uh hey man the, the universe is is weird uh, yeah. <laughs> ra randomness is no longer random. This is what I'm going to say. 
uh, as you, you kind of lean into it and, and kind of plant your feet and grip around this, uh, this sort of wooden handle that's over this solid metal uh, uh, hook, essentially. And you lean into it and you press heavily and you can feel your muscles kind of tightening up and you can feel your, your back kind of uh, putting into it and you feel your feet kind of grip in the ground and you put everything into it and it does not budge. You feel that? <laughs> you know, that was a part of your back that you're going to have to pay attention to later. And just watch, like, we're, eventually we're going to find out the door was like push and not pull. Make a perception check. <laughs> All of us? Nope, just you. Yeah. As you kind of straighten yourself up and, and you kind of stretch out to try to get your back unkinked from the terrible stretch you just put on it. The thing you think about is that this room is full of water. And if this is meant to kind of keep the water from flowing, then all the weight of the water that's in here is pressing against this door. There's no no wonder you couldn't move it. It would probably it would take a, a giant to move it at this point. Oh, yeah. But you kind of step stand up, and you can notice the air pocket getting bigger. Uh, as the water is being sort of forced out of this room. Slowly. So we should try the other door. Is that where the water goes? You're not really sure where the water is going so much as it's getting displaced. You can hunt around if you want to try to find out more. Yep. Yeah. Unless somebody else knows how to open the door, <laughs> who hopefully won't roll, won't roll once. <laughs> I mean, I have not good, like, I'm not good at lifting. I'm good at, at dancing, dancing and, around things. And having a crowbar. That is a very essential skill. Sorry, my cat is getting into everything. <laughs> my cat's been quietly sleeping. Yeah. Um... So what would you like I'll to try look for or try? Pretty much food, so. so the water is going somewhere. I mean, the air pocket is getting bigger, so presumably the water is going somewhere. Does the magic voice this this realization? Yeah. Um. There's too much water in here. Then maybe we have to wait until there's some air in front of the door, at least. To, yeah, like, that's... reduce the... The pressure. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I guess we'll wait and try again. Okay. So, judging from how much has moved away, it's going to take... 15, 20 minutes to get halfway down the room, maybe a little longer. Fortunately for you guys, if you decide to, that would be about the length of a short rest. Hey. I don't mind. Yeah. So what, do you guys, some what do you guys talk about as the room slowly fills with air? Well, this is probably the weirdest thing I've ever done. Same, definitely. I wonder what kind of creatures inhabit this area. And I wonder if there's air on the other side of that door. I mean, you can't hear water. I wish I could say this was the weirdest thing I've done. Yeah, I think it's kind of is, uh, we're done. What is the weirdest thing you've done? Mm. I don't think I can talk about that. Okay, now we need to know. <laughs> I don't think... If you knew, I don't think you would want to. Don't think you would what? I just didn't catch the last word. <laughs> oh, uh, if you knew, I don't think you would want to. 
and I'll file that in my mind for a story to extract from Silas whenever he's drunk or something. <laughs> um, Silas will uh, tell some of the stranger stories that he's heard about things in this area. Oh. Just about uh, lost ships and ghost ships and all that kind of thing. Pick one and, and uh, elaborate a little bit. Mm. If you can. If, if not, we can move on. Uh, anything specific. He probably talks about ghost ships. Uh... There have been a large number of sightings of ships that have been just offshore that never seem to make it into the dock. Having seen the hull on the edge of the uh, the uh, fingers, however, it's not surprising that many of them don't, or some of them don't make it in. But maybe some of them are still trying. Hmm. Are they physical or only illusions? It's not something I particularly want to find out. But... Well, stories say that... Uh... They're the ships of the ship of the damned. All the sailors lost uh, in the area. With a place like this, lots of ships go down. I've got to say, I where I come from is landlocked, so this much water is really unusual for me. Same. I try to stay away from it generally. Yeah. In most places, I think it's probably a good idea to stay away from large bodies of water. I mean, I don't mind like rivers and creeks where you can see the bottom and there's no creepy crawlies except for the occasional leech, which is also gross. Yeah, I don't know how my family does it going out every day on the deep ocean. That's why I'm not there. I'm not that, uh, I don't have the constitution for it. At this point, strangely enough, the, the bubble has enlarged enough that standing, you can actually breathe normal. And the, uh, the pearls are all refreshed. Mm -hmm. Still a couple of feet of water. Do you want to try again or you want to wait longer? Are we done our short rest? Effectively, yes. Okay. Cool. I'm like, back so, up to full. And if you have hit dice you want to spend, now's the time to do it. Or anything else right. refreshes on a short rest. That is what I'm doing. I used half of my hit or half of my hit dice to get all my points back. Mm -hmm. Oh. Let's take Or is that on the character sheet? Too many windows, no mouse. Ah. <laughs> the whole uh, no mouse thing is like causing the biggest frustration out of everything. Yeah. There is a spot for hit dice. I'm not sure if you can roll correctly from there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can only roll one at a time, but yeah. I mean, unless you're really low, you, that's what you should do anyway. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Where are you from, Annie? Uh, Silas says, uh, deflecting uh, to others. <laughs> uh, I, I grew up in, in Paravel. Have any of us heard of this place? It's the capital. It's the capital on the island? Uh, of the kingdom. Yeah, it's on the island of Alaria, which is the kingdom of Alaria as well, which maintains dominion over all of these islands. Yeah. Wow. Is your family wealthy? 
Barely. I thought they might have been. You knew a lot about the coffee. Yeah. I like my coffee. What can I say? It's not a local brand. No, definitely not. It's why I don't think anyone here could afford it. Maybe the Barons, but. Yeah. So, Medric, you gonna try yep. again? Oh yeah. You think you've mostly worked that kink out kink out of your back, but you kind of and sometimes miss the military because their mm -hmm. medics would actually do some uh, uh, chiropractic as well as uh, as well as actual magical medicine. Yeah. You're gonna need a right. good serious stretch when this is all over, though. Damn right. <laughs> I'm back to. I'm just trying to find my character. I got the full nice big stretch. Back cracks a little bit. Yep, in real life too. <laughs> and as you stand up, I think your hips are above the water at this point now. So good. I'll grab the hook and pull. Okay. You find the there's much less resistance than before. Um, it it seems as though, as you're kind of thinking about it and 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 you're pulling up on it, you actually hear a sort of metal on wood clunk uh, from the top, almost as though maybe there was some sort of thing that floats in the water and got triggered when the water went down below it. And as you pull upward on the on it, the water starts to rush underneath the uh, the doorway revealing to you a short hallway, which quickly, although there's less water in here, quickly starts to, to, uh, to, to fill up and even out with the water. There's still another couple of, about a foot and a half left of water on the, on the floor, but now even between these two rooms. Now the far end, you see another door. All right. Are my friends uh, following me, like right behind me or? Yep. Yep. And when you heave this 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 door slash wall all the way up, it kind of clicks at one point and holds, but then there's also a, a the sound of of kind of kertak, kertak, kertak as uh, like metal hitting wood once again, and all of you can see the door starting to slowly lower down, as though it, it hooks upward and then will slower lower, lower itself downward. You rush into that room. Okay. You yep. see a door very similar to the one you just. Uh, hauled on here. Once again, the strength check. Athletic. Uh, while they're doing that, Silas is going to try and splash off more of the poison into the water now that he's uh, up in the air partly. So, okay. Might be able to actually clean some of it off. Unfortunately, this it looks like this door got wedged a little bit and it's starting to resist you. Manny, do you want to give it a shot with a crowbar? Uh, yeah, sure. And you can either roll yourself or you can give him advantage. I would like to give him advantage because... I had a feeling. Because I need it today. <laughs> so you kind of jam... Right. I'm, I'm kind of picturing you jam the, the crowbar underneath it and then you kind of step on the crowbar. And you can feel yeah. the, the pressure. Oh, right. add, add the extra oomph behind it. Athletics. My whole, like, 130 pounds. Yeah, coordinating one, two, three as you kind of step on to onto the crowbar, you can feel yeah, it judder a little bit. And is that good enough? Oh, the 15. Okay, I didn't see if it. I did, it didn't change on my screen. I was I was watching. Okay. Uh, with with Annie kind of uh, putting all of her weight on the crowbar, uh, it does uh, start. It does release. Silas. In front of you, you hear that steady click sound turn to a clunk, and the door starts to descend pretty quickly. Uh, he's going to try and lift it up and squeeze under it. Okay. Thank just you. duck down and squeeze under. Acrobatics or athletics, please? The acrobatics, because I've got a plus one there. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
just enough. It's it's coming down fairly quickly uh, as if released by the other door, uh, but you're able to kind of slip inside. The water this time flowing out into a much larger room, uh, and this time I have to put them on the map. Do do do. Excuse me while I grab some things. Uh, I need to go towards my little bar. There we go. I think some shit's about to go down. <laughs> well, we are coming to the end of the day, but I will show you if I can remember how to do this. There we go. As you see, three of those sea devils standing there looking at the door that is opened. This room is empty of water except for the small amount of water that was trapped in the middle room that flows out over them. And you can see another another uh, shaft and another opening in the ceiling here as well. Uh, and they see the door open, they look over, and you see them. And we will pick up with that combat starting next week. Cool, cool. I wasn't sure. Log in. Initiative! <laughs> You'll be, it, pretty much, yeah, yeah. It feels like we get, <laughs> we get a combat in like every other week because it takes the setup and takes a while to do the combat. But, but there you go. You guys successfully snuck your way in. More or less, snuck your way in uh, into this this uh, crazy chamber. We got ourselves through a butthole. Yeah, you, you did. Mm -hmm. you did. <laughs> we defeated three doors and some plants. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are way ahead of a critical roll record for that. For that. <laughs> so, so I'm going to switch back to our main here. But uh, that is it for today because it is warming up here and I can feel myself starting to stick to my table, which is never a, a comfortable position. And if we were to get into combat, I would be, I would be done. <laughs> They'd be just like, I give up. We're not fighting you. We're too tired for today. But I want to thank you guys for, uh, for playing. Thanks for uh, joining me this week. Thanks for running. And yeah. Thanks for the people who are, are watching. We had somebody drop by and ask if I was Dumbledore. Uh, I am not Dumbledore. <laughs> uh, I am Dumbledore's successor. Uh, if you uh, catch this on uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1, we tend to play on Sunday starting approximately 11 a.m. Uh, Atlantic time. Uh, today we were a little slower because technology. Just going to leave it right there. Uh, and uh, however, if you if you are if you are watching this live or you miss part of it, you can always go back and watch it on YouTube. YouTube.com/slash ENCAF1. Kept them consistent, simple. Soon, I will also open up a, a world builder page so you can see kind of or a world anvil page, so you can see some of the 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 acquired knowledge. As soon as I take half of my life to transfer it over from <laughs> the numerous places I have. Starting with this campaign and starting with some of the islands and, and uh, the people that they've already met and uh, yep. to have that there. Uh, that'll be coming a little bit later. Uh, if you want to find us on Facebook, there is a Facebook page, Legends of the Drowned Isles. There's also Watchers of the Drowned Isles if you feel like conversing. Uh, we are bad at it, but we're trying to get better. <laughs> we're trying to, <laughs> to be more friendly. I've uh, been taking a Facebook break-ish. Yeah. So, like... Yeah, it's it's kind I, of, and I don't think to do it the one time I check Facebook. So it's it's yeah, exactly. And I'm I'm I've got my head solely into Facebook, all the time, and yet never post anything. So I'm I'm just as bad. Yeah. So we'll try. I don't know what we'll put up there. Uh, I want to thank uh, George eighty uh, four, who we uh, uh, had the opportunity to hire to do some great artwork for us. The character artwork, all done by uh, George eighty four. I'm still debating which of the seven thousand characters I'd like to have illustrated by him. I'll probably try to cut that down if by a little bit of money or a little bit of number uh but we I do mean, encourage I like getting the ones uh, like the pcs from the other campaign done yeah 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 uh, I'm that thinking, way we have those i'm thinking that might be the case so uh i will uh sign off uh, again thanks to my players for joining me thank you for watching me and i realize i didn't update the <laughs> so you'll see a weird live update of the date changing in front of you do not be alarmed uh, that is uh, my mistake. If I can even find the right... Uh, there we go. Uh, so uh, we will be playing again if all things align properly on the 16th of August. Until then, 
Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we need a sign off. Anybody got a good, clever phrase to say? I don't want to Not say, really. is it Sunday nope. yet? That's even like and early. ring the bell and do all those things. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. If you're on YouTube, you can subscribe, like, ring the bell. Probably. Jody not being here, we keep forgetting to say that. Exactly. Yeah. Jump up and down yeah, in front of your screen. Like Wave your mouse like you did, like nobody cares. And, uh, Comment. Let us know what you sure. think. Absolutely. All right. That's enough for us. Talk to you guys later. The sign-off song. We need to come up with that.